traditions in all of college football is the walk down the ramp. Been there, done that, as Oklahoma comes out right now. It's an indescribable feeling. It's a feeling of anticipation, of exhilaration, and of pride. It's like you're walking on air. And by the time you reach the bottom of the ramp, as the Oklahoma Sooners are now, you feel bulletproof. 37,000 in burnt orange, 37,000 in crimson and green. And guys, there's nothing in between on this Saturday. Well, Dino, you've known it well as a player and now as a broadcaster. And ABC Sports has known it well over the years. We get set for the Red River Shootout from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. We get set for Oklahoma and Texas. It's at the State Fair. It's the state of these teams that's the question mark right now. First time ever, neither team has a winning record coming into this one. And also, due to some injuries, Texas has had to push some young players to the forefront. And due to suspensions, Oklahoma has four players, two starters, that'll miss this game today. Still, 60 straight years, this has been the scene. And since 1929, they've hooked up at the State Fair. Oklahoma and Texas is next. But right now, let's set it back to our studios in New York. ABC Sports presentation of college football brings you Oklahoma and Texas. And when you say those two names, that's enough pressure right there. But there's even more pressure today. Let's check in with Dean Blevins again. Well, guys, it's amazing how quickly things can change. It was only 28 days ago, Texas coach John Makovic was riding higher in the saddle than perhaps he's ever ridden before. And now, by all accounts, if Texas loses this game today, John Makovic will have coached his last Oklahoma-Texas game. The buzzards are circling as there are three years remaining on John's contract. Boy, I've seen those buzzards before. Gary, you and I have six years of seeing some of those birds flying around. I don't think I've ever seen it this bad. He was a genius in the Big 12 championship game last year, and now this. You know, Brad, um, you know that from working with me for six years, I hold coaches accountable. They make big money. This is big-time sports, and they have to be accountable. And we've had, we've dealt with rumors. John Cooper at Ohio State, Mark Duffner last year at Maryland. But I've never seen it as blatant as this rumor about John Makovic. All involved, the alumnus who pledged $5 million and now is calling for John's job. Texas, for giving credence to these rumors and not putting a stop to them, should be ashamed of themselves. And college football, I think, has a black eye. This game is always pressure-packed, but now these... Young men that are going to be playing for Texas are going to be under more pressure. And in fact, in college football today, I don't think you'll find a game that has more on the line. John Makovic in his sixth season as the head man at Texas. John Blake, pressure on him as well in only his second year. Former player turned head coach. Texas won the toss and deferred. Oklahoma will receive. Bill Dawson's got it teed up, and for the 92nd time, it's the Longhorns and the Sooners, and Dawson just kills this one out of the back of the end zone. So it'll be the Oklahoma offense working from its own 20-yard line. And the Chili's offensive set for the Sooners. Kempnick, they expect him to be a great one. Carpenter, McClure, Macias, and Williams, and those guards have shuffled around there between Carpenter and Macias. Jarrell Jackson, who had a punt return for a touchdown last year. Mo Little, their main receiver. Steve Alexander, an excellent tight end. In the backfield, Justin Fuente will start at quarterback. Bazand and Damon Parker, who's on pace for 1,500 yards this year, has got the first pitch of the ball game. And he got about three before the Texas defense runs him out of bounds. Defensively for the Longhorns. Humphreys move from that linebacker spot out to end now with Mosier. Woodard and Davis, two young guys in the middle due to some injuries. The linebacking core, the best player on Texas defense right now, Dusty Renfro, 51 stops on the year coming in. Kirkpatrick and Nava on the outside. Secondary still young, still learning. McCowan and Babino, Holmes and Wallace. And a second down and eight, and the give is to the first man, the fullback, Fazan, and he's all stacked up by that Texas defense. And that is something they've been unable to do this year, and that's stopping the run. Brad, for Oklahoma's offense to be successful when they have the ball today, I think whomever quarterback they choose to go with, whether it's Fuente or Moore, they must do what they don't do well. Fuente must run, Moore must throw for them to be successful. And for Texas to have a good game today stopping, I think their front four is going to have to come up with a sack. They haven't had one this year. That's amazing. Texas only four sacks as a team. On the option, Fuente to pitch to Parker, and he dropped the ball. Covered it back at the 11-yard line. It'll be three and out for Oklahoma. That's the kind of start the Longhorn defense was looking for. 
Just a simple, actually not much of an option. This was a load option. The back's going to come out here and block. It's really just a pitch, a delayed pitch. Fuente is not much of a threat running the ball. Pitches it, not a bad pitch. Parker does not handle it. And Oklahoma, with punting woes all year, now line up and have to give the ball to Texas. Texas getting good field position. I'll say one thing about Brian Shackelford. He is one heck of a baseball player, but he's got a punt here. Yes. <laughs> He saw his average a little under 39, and Texas should get great field position. He one-hops that, and that showed his baseball prowess, but that also showed his kick problems. Well, it problems. actually worked out great. Rolls down to the 49-yard line. Not a bad kick, considering how it started. A 40-yard punt for Shackelford. And Texas will go to work. Great shape offensively. Their offensive line, Bishop Wood. Feebigger is the leader. Humphrey and Adams, the strong guard and weak guard. Epps moves to wide receiver. Brian White goes back to flanker where he used to be, and Steve Bradley is the tight end. James Brown, we get our first look at him. He was injured in the UCLA game. We had Ricky Williams, a great one. Ricky Brown is his lead man. Brad, in three of the games, Texas has had a penalty on the first play of the game. And they have always sputtered on their opening drive, and that's something that Dean tells us the coaches stress to the players not only all week, but again before this ball game. So they've got great field position, but there goes a negative play, and I mean about eight yards. Martin Chase just chased down Ricky Williams. Defensively, two good ones inside. Chase leads the club in sacks. You can see why as he's got the big play for the loss there. Callens is a true freshman in Burton at the end spots. Travian Smith, maybe their best player, linebacker, is injured, and that means that Terrence Malone moves in there. Ivy and Allen round out the linebacking core. The secondary, two starters, again, are missing. Terry White, Woods, Rideau, and Pee Wee Woods in there. And again, the suspended players, Ghana Joseph and Corey T. Ivy, who will not play today due to a rules violation. Second and 15, Brown rolls and throws and comes up. To the fullback, down to the 45 is Ricky Brown, and it'll bring up about a third down and four. Again, problems this week just a couple of days ago with team violations, and John Blake came down hard, losing a couple of uh, starters in Corey T. Ivey and Ghana Joseph. He might be their best defensive player. Guys. Yeah, well, with Travian Smith out, I have to say Ghana Joseph is their best player, and this defense depends a lot on their free safety as we will develop as the game goes on with the style of attack that Oklahoma uses. Two tight ends set right now for the Longhorns on third down and four at the OU 45-yard line. Opening drive of the ball game for Texas. They have not scored a point in the first quarter this year. Brown's level as he throws, but he got the Shot complete to Courtney Epps and a first down at the 35-yard line. James is shaking it off. Boy, he took a shot. Brad, for Texas to be successful in this football game, Ricky Williams needs help. He needs a partner. He needs James Brown. He needs the James Brown of a year ago, a guy who can move and get out of the pocket. All the running and offense can't come through number 11. And Texas, to also to be successful, has to handle Oklahoma's movement. Both OSU, or Oklahoma State, and UCLA give the offensive line trouble with a lot of stunts and blitzes. James needs help. He might need a chiropractor after that <laughs> opening shot he took, but he's got a first down. And here's the inside trap, and it's Ricky Williams in the open field. Down to the 21-yard line. Picked up for 14 and an excited tailback, one of the best in the country. With a big gainer there, it's first down. Texas at the 21-yard line. For Texas, the script that John Makovic has had to start this drive has worked. You're going to see the inside trap. Ricky Williams is going to come underneath it from the right-hand side, following the big tackle. It's almost like a delayed trap, almost a draw trap, to get Ricky into the second row. And a first down at the 21. Opening offensive drive. Texas has not scored this year in the first quarter. Brown on the roll. Now he's going to keep it. That wheel looks pretty good. He goes out of bounds after getting about six, maybe more. Run out over there near the 15-yard line. Corey L. Ivey, the middle linebacker, made the hit. Brad, James Brown is probably the one, one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in college football. He's like a Damian Craig or a Donovan McNabb when he's healthy. But when he's not healthy, he's pretty average in the pocket. Oklahoma is going to try to keep him in the pocket. I'm sure John Makovic will try to get him outside of the pocket. That'll be the chess game, more like a checker game that's going to go on all day. In the red zone this year, Texas, 82%. Seven of their scores have been touchdowns. Their problem, not enough trips in the red zone, I'm afraid. Second down and four here. 
the gives to Williams. Nothing doing on the left side. Nothing doing on the right side. He lost about three. Shaq Brown in there, along with Cornelius Burton to make the hit. Handle Oklahoma. You have to handle their two tackles. Texas does it with a nice double team right here. They're going to double team Chase and then scrape up on the middle linebacker to make the play this time. Corey L. Ivy. Watch the block. Runs right back. Actually, Ivy ran back in by it. They got the backside linebacker to play, but they're going to have to attract two men to stop Chase and Greg inside. Three wide out set from the shotgun on third and six for Brown. Has time. Lost it to the end zone for Brian White, and it went through his hands. It would have been a touchdown. Pee Wee Woods was covering. Brian White would love to have a second chance of that one. Brad, we did the UCLA game, and we saw how some of those big passes early in the game that UCLA hit really changed the game. James Brown could not throw that ball any better, and again, the the Texas wide receivers are not coming up with any big plays, although he may have been out of bounds anyway. On that one. More incompletions last week for James Brown than any other game in his yeah. career, but he had nine drop passes. There's the first one of the day. You know, and I, I always said they shouldn't count. <laughs> As Why a quarterback, you would. Yeah, he can't throw them and catch them at the same time. Bill Dawson, 34-yard field goal. This should be a chip shot for him. And he got it. So Texas, with good field position, takes it down and gets three out of it from a Dawson field goal. And the first time this year, the Longhorns have drawn blood in the first stanza. Texas with a 3-0 lead on the Dawson field goal. 10-38 remaining, and when they score first, uh, they're pretty hard to beat under John McAvoy. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that was the goal in this football game, to get off cleanly. They had a big stop of Oklahoma's offense with the fumble on the option play and then turned it around into a rather smooth drive, although I think Oklahoma's pretty happy to stop him with a field goal. I agree. Dawson's kick this time returnable. Matty Butler the goal line. Butler trying to drag people to the 20. He's not going to get there. Nice coverage now, by the Texas special team. The Butler could have done it, but he didn't do it on that one. <laughs> And inside the 20 this time again for the Oklahoma offense. We thought all week we would see, at least I thought all week, Brad, we'd see a lot of Eric Moore, considering the Texas defense had so much trouble handling mobile quarterbacks. Lindsey from Oklahoma State last week, and then we saw Cade McNown for UCLA just give him yep. getting out of the pocket. And I don't know if we're going to see more because of his re-injured groin. They say he's only at about 50% healthy. Quick snap. Went to play fake, bootleg, wants to throw, and does. Across the middle, incomplete, intended for Alexander, his tight end. And he got it too far out in front of him. Fuente has to make those type of plays. One of the few times they're going to be able to get Jason outside of the pocket. He really doesn't have to run a lot. All he has to do is pressure the outside of the Texas defense, and then those big, good tight ends like Steven Alexander should get open. I thought that ball was catchable, but not a great throw. There's his numbers coming in. Only one touchdown. Parker hitting the backfield. Got forward for about a yard. That's it. Nice penetration by the Texas front wall again. I think it was Sean Rogers, the true freshman that time that came in there. They have a three-man rotation up front uh, with three very young tackles, considering they lost Chris Akins and Casey Hampton. They're going with Cedric Woodard, Leonard Davis, and Sean Rogers, three different guys up there at defensive tackle. So another third and long situation. Not exactly Oklahoma's strong suit. Straight drop, a lot of pressure, screen pass, scooped up by Parker, and Parker's got the first down, spins across the 35. Good look and run. That shows you what Damon Parker can do. It's a 16-yard gain, first down Oklahoma. It didn't look pretty, but it got done, <laughs> didn't it? Remember, all week, the Texas defense has been schooled and just pushed. You got to get to the quarterback. You have to get to the quarterback. So now he says, all right, coach, I got to the quarterback. They throw a screen on the play. When you can get the ball in Damon Parker's hands, He's a 4-3 guy that makes things happen. Quick snap again, and here he comes on a handoff. And Parker out to the 42-yard line. Pick up of about five again, almost six. And Oklahoma's got a little something working offensively. Parker came in 664 yards rushing on the season. And again, that's a pace of about 1,500 on the year. 
and over 100 yards last year against the Longhorns. 107 on 24 carries. And it's second down and four. Parker hit in the backfield, broke one tackle, bounces outside. He almost got a first down. It'll be third and one when we come back after checking in with John Saunders. John? Brad, it's time for the Burger King update. 14 plays on the opening drive for Penn State. He did it this in just over four minutes. Ed Harris from five yards out for the touchdown. The Nittany Lions on the board, 7-0. Brad? You can almost hear that lion growling, can't you, Gary? <laughs> Here it's third and one. Yeah, keeper for Fuente. He's in the open field. The flag is down. There might be a holding call that would negate a big play of about 20 for Justin Fuente. Let's wait and see. Well, you can see the game plan unfolding for OU. They've seen the films. They know that Fuente has to show, has to establish the option play. Even though this one's going to be called back, Texas is realizing that they're going to have to stop the running quarterback, even if it isn't more. Not quite sure who got the holding penalty. Though. Penalties have absolutely, absolutely killed Oklahoma this year, and that's a major reason for their two and three record. Look at that. And now a key one there on third and one. It would have been a first down down inside the Texas 40-yard line. Well, they outright win the Cal game if they don't have the penalties that they had in that game, and they probably win last week without the blocked field goal on a penalty. So you're right, Brad. Penalties, they can't play Texas and have that type of mistakes. Three wide out set on third and a dozen. They're going to go back to the far side, incomplete, way over the intended receiver, Mo Little. And Fuente took a hit. Dusty Renfro that time. Again, it was a linebacker, I believe, who got into Fuente's face. It wasn't the defensive line, and Oklahoma had to drop back quick and throw. And so Oklahoma has to drop back quick and punt. It'll be Shackleford in there again. Again, he had a low snap. He had a handle on a one-hop. That's Hodges Mitchell, uh, Mitchell, the freshman, out of right here in Dallas. He'd love nothing more than to light up the scoreboard where he played his high school ball. He might get a chance. He's going to have to backpedal here. Got it at the 20. Got around the first man. and Got about 10 out of the return. 46-yard punt, a 10-yard run back by Hodges Mitchell. 90-second meeting between Oklahoma and Texas. Texas in front by three. ABC's Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And Circuit City, the choice for price, selection, and service. State Fair in Dallas, and the states of these teams has been uh, kind of <laughs> clouded by injuries and suspensions. Dean's got more on that, Dino. Yeah, you know, and these teams are undermanned anyway, and so you add the suspensions and you add the injuries, and then each team had about five injuries coming into the season with that were out. Let's take a look at the graphics today of the suspensions and the injured players. Oklahoma, the two linebackers, Smith, Davis, Ghana, Joseph, Ivy, and Blocker. They're the Texas numbers. The point is both of these teams have almost non-existent depth. And you add all this up, it says that they are hurting. And then you throw the guys like Eric Moore, who has a groin injury, and the two tight ends at Oklahoma, they're about 50 to 70%. Too many guys in windbreakers, not enough guys in shoulder pads. Here's Ricky Williams. He's got his squared up and goes for yep. almost five. You got it. Too many windbreakers, not enough game breakers. That's the problem. That's how you <laughs> That's have two right. teams in this game for the first time, as you mentioned, in history of this game, 100 years, that both neither team has a winning record. That's pretty unbelievable. And why this game was such a, you know, a huge game around the country. And now, you know, these guys, it's still huge. But around the country, everybody's wondering what happened to Texas and Oklahoma. Texas leads the series. Not only the last eight meetings, but overall, the last two, of course, won a tie two years ago. And then there weren't any ties last year. Right. And it was Oklahoma by three in OT. Second down. Long four. Brown comes up firing. Got Derek Lewis, his tight end, and it's going to be... He lost the ball out of bounds. Yeah, it's going to be a forward game, though. Yes, I was going to say short of the first down, but I think he's got it now. That's the way to do it, Derek. Brad, you know, we were mentioning about Texas and Oklahoma. This is the end of that play right there. Boy, I thought he was down, yeah. and I really was, you know, Terry White was all over that play right there, and I thought he was down way short of the first down. But we were talking about Texas and Oklahoma and the state of things right now in college football but that's not just the case for texas and oklahoma 
you know, the winningest teams in college football are struggling. And we'll, we'll talk about that as this day unfolds also. I think the officials are having a chat right now about whether or not that ball is going now, to be allowed to go I, forward to the 42. I think I they're think pulling it, should, it back. I think it should go back. I, I, I thought it should. Hal Dobbs. He was down. I mean, it was. Hal Dobbs, our referee. The fumble went forward and out of bounds. It will be put at the spot of the fumble. It will be second down. All right. So it will not be a first down. Well, now they got to move the chains back. Yes, they do. Should be back to about the 39, 38, somewhere in there is where right. he made the catch and was dragged down. They're going to spot it at the 39. It still was very advantageous fumble because that, that is not where he was down. It is not second down, though, is what Hal just said. And it's third down right. as far as I'm counting. Yep. Third and one is you what just it should change be. It. it should be this right here. Yeah, okay. See, that'll well, change. I'll watch how magically that okay. changes. Stay I'll take that. mine off as soon as that comes on. I'm keeping it, though. In case, keep, there there, there go. we go. I can you take mine it. off. Those are for the people in the lounges <laughs> and the sports bars around. <laughs> for you math majors who aren't <laughs> listening. Third down in a yard. That changes the complexion of this play, obviously. Oh, very strange formation here for Texas. Oh, they're going to shift back. They shift back, and it's quite the flanker is going to go in motion. Third and one is in Ricky Williams. Yes, it's Ricky Williams going to that vacated area and broke a tackle, and he's out to midfield. The flanker White went in motion that way. It kind of cleared things off for Ricky Williams to play one-on-one. -on -one. I think the shift in formation by Texas, a game-planning thing by the Texas offensive staff, really confused Oklahoma and created the mismatch. Look, all three receivers on third and one are out here. Now we're going to get a shift down, and then Brian White's going to go in motion the other way. Oklahoma gets a bit confused, and then they get around the corner here for Texas on first down. That's good coaching, and that's taking advantage of something to see on film. Yep. It allowed the tight ends to block down. It freed up Ricky Williams for a first down at the 48 of the Sooners. 3 nothing Longhorns. Brown on first down. Deep out. In and out of the hands of Brian White. That would have been a heck of a catch if Brian could have held on, but that ball was right there again. And if you're James Brown, Gary, you've been through this, you got to get a little bit frustrated. It's like, come on, guys, just hold on to it. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was not a bad pass, but here, here's the free safety right here, Redu. Everything is going to be funneled into Redu. So those out routes that Texas right now is trying to throw are going to be tough because the corners know they have help to the inside. And no matter what happens, Mike Woods should realize I can play the outside routes because I have help inside. Second down of 10. Here's a little counter. Ricky Williams. Boy, he's doing some of that on his own. Got inside the 45 to the 44. It'll bring up third down and six. With 6.15 left first quarter. If you just joined us, Texas stopped Oklahoma on their opening march. Forced a punt. Got good field position and then kicked a 34-yard Phil Dawson field goal. That's where we stand right now. Brad, we talked about these are the four winningest teams in college football percentage-wise of all time. And outside of Michigan, the other four, Notre Dame, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, are all struggling a combined 12 and 11 record this year. Wow. Shifting of power. Third down at six. A little miscommunication, and Ricky Williams still might get a first down. James Brown and Ricky Williams had a little collision on that tight handoff, and Ricky almost took James's hand with him on the football. We talk about the top five percentage programs of all time, but if you look what's happened since 1994, three season, you see that Alabama's winning, Notre Dame's struggling a bit, and of course right down here, the big one, Oklahoma. 41% winning, and Texas has had three straight championships, but Oklahoma, and that's why John Blake's the coach, let's right. be honest. And if you think John Makovic's the only guy under fire, and you talk about Alabama winning, right. that's Coach DuBose about last week. <laughs> He's had a heck of a week down right. in Tuscaloosa. Here's Brown, who comes up throwing uh, incomplete intended for his tight end, and very nice job by pass. Corey Ivey. That was a very poor pass, though, Brad. He had him. He had the matchup that he wanted, Ivy to Derek Lewis, the best receiving tight end. He read it properly, and Brown just did not make the throw and he's very upset with himself because he knows that that's the type of play you work on and game plan to get that matchup the middle linebacker on your tight end again brown last week 13 of 34 and a lot of drop passes that one as gary said was uh, not delivered on target and it brings up second down and 10. just over five minutes to play in the opening quarter from the cotton bowl Inside handoff, fumble, never had the exchange, and Ivy's got it for Oklahoma. Ricky 
Williams never got the handle, and the Sooners take over. Brad, did Ricky Williams know he was getting the ball on this know. play? Oh, it hit him in the elbow. That was a bad handoff. It's the quarterback's job to put that ball on the numbers. Ricky Williams had a high right elbow that time, and James just didn't put it in the basket. They had a little miscommunication on the previous That's one right. on the first down run. They ran into each other, so they're spacing and timing a little bit off. Oklahoma quickly up to the line at the 36 in the quick snap. And DeMond Parker into the secondary. Boy, did he come through that hole in a hurry. Got 12. And Texas is lucky he didn't get 112. We spoke with the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, Dick Winder, Brad. And he said that this guy, DeMond Parker, reminds him of Brian Hanspart. I mean, he's got great speed like Hanspart. And, of course, Dick coached at Texas Tech. And they're running a very similar offense as you look at Dick Winder right there. The quick snaps at the line of scrimmage. Of course, we had Byron Hansbar at Texas Tech, and he says Parker has some of those same qualities, including that lightning quick first burst that we've seen a couple times. And this time it's Michael Rose, the fullback, and he only gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Nava made the tackle. It'll bring up second down at 10. Very unique offense that uh, Oklahoma runs. They attack the line of scrimmage and try to catch Texas before they can line up. Look at that run up there. I like that. The quarterback will get his hand under and say, give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> In all. some form or fashion. That's anyway. right. Here's a little bit of option. Fuente, the pitch to Parker. Made the first man miss the second. The third got him, but not before he got seven yards to the 45. He's pretty nifty. He likes to make people miss, and he kind of showed us that the other day at practice. <laughs> yeah, let's watch it, because he put it into perspective. I'm thinking about, you know, trying to get past the bag and trying to make the secondary guys miss. As soon as I make those guys miss, you know, it should be six points. He almost had six there. Got seven yards, third down. On the roll, Fuente has to throw it a desperation. It's broken up, knocked away on the sideline by Babino. And so just when it looked like Oklahoma again had something going, now they've got an injured player as well as Sammy Williams, their right tackle, is down back near midfield. You know, Brad, starting this game, it appears that Oklahoma is very comfortable on first and second down. But on third down, it looks like they run out of place. I mean, they, <laughs> they, they run the quarterback wide. They run the option. They really don't have confidence in their team to block the pass rush and the blitzes. They're only one for four in this game. They have been success, successful in the games they've won. In the games they've lost, they've been very bad in third down conversions. Only had one drop back, straight drop back pass today, and that was when Fuente missed his tight end on a crossing pattern. It's a fourth down. Play is stopped here while they help Sammy Williams to his feet. The senior out of Harvey, Illinois, 312 pounder. They're going to help him off the field with 337 left in the first quarter. Right, Big Tex. Last year saw the Sooners down 24-13 in the fourth quarter when Jarrell Jackson took this punt, took it 51 yards for a touchdown. As Spark could come back, which was capped then in overtime, it was James Allen punching it in from two yards out. It gave the Sooners a 30-27 OT win. And in 95, a couple of years ago, Gerald Moore goes in for a touchdown in another hard-fought skirmish in the Red River battle. And it resulted in a tie, 24-24, as those Marriott moments give us a look back at the last couple of years. That's a shot of the Oklahoma box, and that's Pete McGinnis, the special team coach, who is upstairs for Oklahoma. Very unusual, as they've had their problems in special teams. Well, they got a good athlete fielding this. Thought maybe he'd fake it, but he kicks it away. High lazy kick, taken fair catch, and a penalty marker oh, down. That was silly. That was a silly mistake for Oklahoma. Fair catch. John talked about it, that guys were going to try to get a coach, but Cedric Jones that time got too close on a fair catch. It's one thing to do it when the guy's going to run with it. you got to give him two yards. That's, That's right. Look. Right now you got to get away and look for the fumble. He's not going to run the ball. Ooh, and it was Cedric Jones. Know, that was pretty close. Yeah, it was close enough that they're going to call it. 
There's Pete McGinnis, linebacker coach. He is the special teams coach this year. They did not have one last year. The whole staff handled it a year ago. But, Brad, it's very unusual to have your special teams guy upstairs. Usually that guy's a very enthusiastic guy on the sidelines. I'd call it close. If I was the coach in the box, I'd call it weak. I don't know about <laughs> that flag. You got it. At any rate, at the 19-yard line, that's where Texas will start on offense. John Makovic's team out in front by three. Both wideouts to the near side. Brown's going to give it off. Quick opener off the left to Ricky Williams. And he got about five. He's second down at five after we remind you coming up next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern, America's biggest road show will roll on. Most of you will see 13th-ranked Texas A&M against number 23, Kansas State. Or other college football action around the country. Now we got some... Good games coming up in the ACC, Georgia Tech, Florida State, Michigan State, Northwestern. We'll be out in Tucson for Washington and Arizona. Check the local listings for the game in your area or what you can get on pay-per-view from your local cable subscriber. Incomplete pass intended for Kwame Cavill, and that kind of tells the story of the injury situation for Texas last year with that guy trying to catch a pass. Yeah, here. Kwame Cavill was going to be red-shirted this year, but he's forced to play because Wayne McGarity... Dustin Armstrong are both injured. This team had to completely revamp the football team, and Cavill had to give up his redshirt season. But again, Brad, it was not an easy catch. I mean, right. Brown is a bit off at the start of this game. Third down at five. A shift from the eye to the shotgun with three wideouts for James Brown. Straight over the middle, Cavill in and out of his hands and almost intercepted. That one well in front of Cavill again, and Rideau almost picked that one off. Let's check in with Dean. Guys, the ball is wet, and they've had some problems with exchanges. You had the fumble earlier with Ricky Williams and James Brown. You've seen some receivers drop balls, but, of course, they dropped a lot of dry footballs at Stillwater a week ago. <laughs> um, Oklahoma's punter Shackelford fumbled the snap a while ago, so the ball is wet. That's a little bit of a concern. We did have rain about a half an hour before the game here at the fairgrounds, and it came down pretty heavy, in fact, and then became a drizzle. It stopped for right now, but it is a little slick out there. Yeah, wind is a factor, but it's at Texas's back right now. Schultz is to punt. Jarrell Jackson, remember, we just looked at a Marriott moment of him taking 151 yards last year. He waits on this one at the 28-yard line. And Jackson across the 40, out to the 42-yard line. 48-yard kick, 14-yard return. Monday Night Football returns the Cowboys and the Redskins. NFC East battle coming up. 9 o'clock Eastern on Monday night. The first Monday night game in Washington's new Jack Kent Cook Stadium. Both teams 3-2. and two. Alan Frank, Dan, and Swanee will have it for you. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dean Blevins here. The Cotton Bowl where it's 3-0 Texas and Oklahoma's got it back offensively from its own 42-yard line. And it's Parker. And DeMond got about five. He looks like he's bottled up. He bounces off and makes something out of nothing. He's got 27 yards already on eight carries. Brad, last time we were here, we had Aaron Humphrey at middle linebacker. The team has struggled. Aaron is more comfortable playing defensive end. They've made the switch. And actually, I think Dusty Renfro is more comfortable in the middle also. Second down, a long five. Parker. With a blocker in front. Dips outside, first down, and a lot more inside the 40. Broke a tackle, cuts back inside the 20s, all the way to the nine-yard line. <laughs> 45 yards in a flash for Damon Parker. Brad Humphrey may be more comfortable at defensive end, but this time... He was in the comfort zone of Jermaine Frazan this time because he took a block and let the play get outside of him. Big number 77, Tim Macias was out there, and then Parker showed why he is considered one of the top five or six backs in the country because not only is he big and strong, he can run. They spot it all the way down inside the eight-yard line. That's where it's first and goal. And this time bottled up. Maybe a yard game for Fazan and DeMond getting a breather on the sideline already with 72 yards. And he's coming back in after that long run. He took a one-play breather, and he'll be heading back in from the OU sideline. Oklahoma trying to take the lead here with 126 remaining first quarter. 
Brad, what that attacking snap pattern for Oklahoma does, it makes Texas declare. Watch, the guys run up, the quarterback delays. You don't know if he's going to snap it right away or delay. He did snap it right away, and on the option, pitches to Parker inside the five, touchdown. why you take a one-play breather so you can come in and score. You bet. Justin Fuente is not going to remind anybody of Jack Milton or Dean Blevins, for that matter. <laughs> but he's just good enough if he throws the ball to make someone tackle him. This time was Brandon Nava. Waits till the last second, gives it to Parker, and if Parker gets outside that seven people for Texas, he's too big, too fast, too strong, too smart, too everything. Got he's a gonna little, score. little bit of a shove block from his fullback out there as well, and went in easily. Trying to make it 7-3 is Jeremy Alexander. And the extra point is up and good. So early in the game, the burnt orange and white were cheering. Now the crimson and cream can cheer their suitors as they go 58 yards for a touchdown. Let's take a look at what's coming up Wednesday, prime time on ABC. Dharma's telling Greg to shut up, and <laughs> Oklahoma's just went 58 yards yeah, for a touchdown. They just slapped him, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, the kickers have had problems with injuries. Let's check in with Dean right now. He's got more on those guys. Well, coming into the game, the Oklahoma kickers were hurting. It was possible coming in that the fourth kickoff guy would have to go, but Jeremy Alexander, who just converted the point after, is out there now. You can expect a high short kick because Alexander sprained his knee last week in kicking against Kansas, and I spoke with him before the game. He says it's hurting on every kick, and you can see him limp. Yep, I was going to say, he was limping back after putting the ball on the tee and kicking into a little bit of a wind as well. So yeah, he's hobbling coming forward. Not a bad kick, though. Great hang time. Hodges Mitchell at the 13. Straight up the middle. And the freshman goes out in a hurry to the 35, and that's where the Longhorns will get it back. Yep, Alexander is really limping off after that kick. Well, John Makovic must start to realize that his wide receivers, it just wasn't a one-week problem dropping the ball. His wide receivers are not co coming up with any big catches. So I think he's going to have to adjust, and that means throw the ball to the backs. Brown, James Brown is three for eight right now. Throw the ball to the tight ends, although we've already had a, a drop by Derek Lewis, but he right. has to throw the ball to different people, spread it around. Quick snap, and again, some confusion in the Texas backfield. Ricky Brown, the fullback, the man that finally got the handle, but Kelly Gregg was right there to meet him, and that one looked like a blown-up play from the get-go as well. I, I, it's hard for me to put a finger on what the problem is, but you're right. Ricky Williams, James Brown do not appear to be on the same page with some of these handoffs. They look confused. They're trying to do maybe too much with the play. Forces a second and long. Second down at 12. Final half minute of the first quarter. White, the flanker will go in motion. Inside handoff, Williams ran into his blocker and bounced off and got to the 37, only about a four-yard pickup. See, that's some of the problems that this offensive line for Texas is having. Right now, Oklahoma is doing a lot of the stunting that Oklahoma State did against Texas and UCLA did, and the guy looks like he's got his guy blocked, but it's right in the area they're trying to run the ball. That's the end of one. From the Cotton Bowl, and it's Oklahoma leading Texas 7-3.
This is college football on ABC Sports. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Dean Blevins from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, trailing Oklahoma 7-3 as we're set to start the second quarter. And the Longhorns facing a third and eight situation from their own 37-yard line. Bradley, the tight end, goes out split to the top of your screen and three wide receivers to the right. Basically an empty backfield. Hodges Mitchell in motion, so is James Brown to throw. Lost one, nobody's going to have a play on that. Yeah, but we're going to get rough in the pass here at the other end. Boy, that's going to be a gift for yeah, Texas. Yeah, it really is. I think it was Coriel, Ivy, or Martin Chase, but I think it was Ivy that made it. Just see, you see the difference in Brown as this ball basically James was throwing this ball away right here and he got away with it. But James got out there one on one that time outside of the pocket and he didn't use his feet. He tried to use his arm and he's not as big of a threat. Kiwi Woods almost made what would have been an unbelievable interception. Yeah, Wouldn't have counted I he, anyway. I think he stepped out he first did. though, Brad. But, but as Brown breaks the lineup, breaks the pocket, he's only got one guy standing in front of him, and, and the James Brown of old would have taken that guy to the cleaners yeah, and made the right. first down. Now they get the first down the hard way, and out to the 47-yard line. At the 47. John Makovic, Longhorns trailing 7-3. They've got a Dawson field goal. Devon Parker scored from seven yards out for OU. Jackson and Ricky Williams dual backfield. And Brown pumps. Wants a stop and go for Brian White. And shot it incomplete. Downfield, out of bounds. Dean Blevins on the sideline. Dino? You know, there's a lot of question about whether Texas would be able, excuse me, sir. Texas would be able to uh, bounce back after the big loss to UCLA when we were down there four weeks ago. I think the team is working on bouncing back, but the SID staff, the sports information staff, is having a rough go here. This is our flip card, the Oklahoma coaching staff, head coach Bob Toledo. He's out at UCLA, isn't he? <laughs> hey, those guys are good. We're not getting on them, but uh, there you go. That's the first error they've made in a decade. Yeah, that's that right. is true. Well, they're trying to forget it, but it won't go away. Well, that's right. <laughs> Second down at 10, you saw Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, looking on. Ricky Williams follows his blockers. Ricky Williams inside the 40, and he drags a tackler down to the 36-yard line. Brandon Daniels holding on for dear life, and he thought he was out here riding one of these steers they have at the state fair. <laughs> Steve Bradley is the tight end. He's the blocking tight end, and watch this great wall-off block he gets right here on the end of the line of scrimmage. Just takes his guy, Cornelius Burton, pins him, and that allows Ricky Williams to get outside, and that's the type of blocking that the tight ends... If you're not going to catch the ball, you better block. <laughs> That's right. Ricky Williams has 63 yards now, so he and Parker have been everything we expected. At the 36-yard line, the Longhorns with a first down. Straight drop by Brown. Through high, incomplete. And Ricky Brown got a little bit tangled up with the defender, Terry White, back there. Right. Some of the Texas fans booing that. Yeah, I think John Makovic's thinking the way we are up here, Brad, because he's saying if my wide receivers can't catch, i got to throw it to my backs. Yep. And that time, from the free safety position, Terry White has come in as really the third string free safety. Joseph is now out of the game. They went with Rideau for a while, and now they've turned it over to Terry White in the free safety spot. I they still think Texas' best bet throwing the ball is to Derek Lewis, but he's not in there right now. Bradley, yeah. the blocking tight end, if you will, is. He's on the right side. Pattern has been to run on second down and pick up half of it. This time they'll throw over the middle, complete it to White the flanker, but a very short gain. Got about four yards, maybe. Mike Woods tracked him down, and it's going to bring up third and long. Brian White was the backup flanker last year behind Michael Adams. This year he's moved back to the spot that John told us he's more comfortable at, more space out there for him to roam. Brian White finally catches one. <laughs> Four balls thrown his way, one catch. That's not a good average. No, it's not. That gets you $2 million in baseball, but not in football. <laughs> Hitting two fifty. <laughs> right. Third down and six for Texas. Here comes Texas. Brown scrambles around in the backfield, lets it go, and what a catch this time. 
by Ricky Brown at the 20 and a first down Longhorns. He had to lay out for that thing. See what happens when James Brown makes some people look at him in the pocket besides just standing back there and throw. This is the type of pressure that Brown can put on a defense. He's going to come back here and just buy time. Nothing there, nothing there. Now I move. And then the guy frees up just in time, makes a little sidearm throw and a one-hander catch. I think he got it. I did too. Ricky Brown caught it. At the 20. First and 10 for Texas. Two minutes into the second quarter, they trail 7-3. Sooners don't blitz much here. They come on one now. Brown to the end zone. White overshot him. Had him open. He sure did. And Mike Woods had knew he had him an inside technique. He got beat to the inside, closest to the goal post, and that one almost cost him six. A good throw would have. So second and 10. Derek Lewis does check back in now at tight end, and Bradley comes out. Seems like Texas all game has had a lot of second and long so yes. far, whether with drop balls or, or wetter, but uh, it has been a brown, I think, and, and if you look at the stats, James is 0 for 5 throwing on first down. That'll kill you. Three wide outs to the near side, and Lewis at tight end. Slip to the top of your screen on second and 10. Long count by Brown, little option. Gets it out. Ricky Williams on the run. Got a block. Heads to the corner. Got what he could and then got tagged out of bounds by Mike Woods and Pee Wee Woods. They put the wood to him over there at the 17-yard uh, line. It'll bring up a third down and six again. See James Brown. There's no doubt this is an audible. James takes the mouthpiece out, calls the audible option play to the right, comes down, but really has nowhere to go because right there standing and waiting for him is Daryl Rocky Bright. Number 95, the true freshman, makes him pitch it too early. Third down and six. Well, this is a blitz look. All 11 people for Oklahoma are right there. There's no one back. James better get rid of it in a hurry. On the back pedal, he does. And yeah. the penalty marker going to be interference back there on Rideau against Hodges Mitchell. Well, second time by penalty, they're yep. going to get a key first down. That's right, and this is exactly what happened to Oklahoma against Cal when they had 148 yards and penalties in that game and cost them the game. 11 men attacking the line of scrimmage is the defense that Bill Young called, and he ended up getting a holding penalty on the play. And there you see the interference call. Hal Dobbin tried to tell you our referee's mic is taking a little bit of a weather hit today, apparently, so you may not have heard it. And Hodges says, where's the play? It was right there, Hodges, right by your right foot. Still seven tough yards in an offense. Uh, very surprised if uh, Oklahoma team that's only given up 129 yards a game rushing is going to allow Texas to jam it down their throats here. Ricky Williams on a delay. Williams, and he does jam it all the way to the one. Oh, he dropped the ball, but it bounced right back to him. That was a nice one hopper. <laughs> That's like when he was playing in the Phillies organization out there in the outfield. One hop right back to himself. It's second and goal. This counter play has really been giving Oklahoma problems all game. But right at the end of the play here, see Ricky text the ball, but the helmet goes right across him. The ball pops out. Now watch this. Bouncing right back to him. <laughs> 11th play of the Longhorn Drive with 12-10 remaining first half. They trail 7-3. Ricky Williams gives them the lead. Flags down as Williams goes in. Penalty marker on the far side. There's no doubt that Texas puckered just a bit on that play. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. Offside. Oh, my. Must have been lined up offside for Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Must have been the team that uh, puckered just a bit. And Ricky Williams takes it in the end zone. Great drive that time, aided by the penalties that really kept yep. this thing. Remember the roughing, the penalty, passer penalty, and, and then, then the, the pass, pass interference. interference. And Phil Dawson in for the point after. All-time leading scorer in Texas college football history and he knocks it through and the Longhorns have regained the advantage with 12.05 to go in the half Ricky Williams does the honors it's the Longhorns by three
Now the Longhorns have had some trouble this year. First James Brown went down with a sprained ankle in that Rutgers game. And then we were in Austin to watch Route 66 UCLA handing the Longhorns their second worst loss ever. And then just some of the miscues and bobbles of last week as Oklahoma State for the first time forever it seems a winner over the Longhorns. But today things looking a little bit brighter as the sun is trying to peek through in Dallas. Ricky Williams did peek through for the touchdown. It's the Longhorns 10 and a Sooner 7. 65-yard drive and 11 plays right at four minutes, 359. It took them to regain the advantage and Dawson to kick. High and very short, and they're going to call fair catch, but it's fumbled. Boy, boy, that was dangerous. They called the fair catch, which is not a bad yeah. move at that point. It, like it was Cedric Jones who called the fair catch, but didn't make the grab. He misjudged it like the right fielder for the Atlanta Braves last night. <laughs> Man, that was Andrew Jones, <laughs> yeah, Andrew Cedric, whatever. Against Oklahoma State, they trounced him a year ago, and an 83-point turnaround later was a tough one to swallow last week, 42-16. to First loss to Oklahoma State since 1944. This is a 90-second meeting between Oklahoma and Texas, and it's the Longhorns by three. And here comes Kazan, the fullback. Actually, he's playing out of the tailback spot some, and that's really where that handoff came from. He's put up some bigger yards this year, and it's not with that short handoff no, to the fullback. You're right. Uh, last year for Texas, the fullback, uh, excuse me, for Oklahoma, the fullback carried the ball 40 times all year. Already going into this game, Bazan has 62 attempts, but they're using more one back, two tight ends, so right. it's a little different look. We got six at second and four. Quick snap. Here he goes the other way. Oh, man. <laughs> there was a collision over there, and it was... I think it was Nava and Humphrey that Humphrey. time together. But it looked like Humphrey to be. <laughs> wow. That was a collision. And it's going to bring up That's one third when, down. when your feet are crossing the line and your head is hitting the back of the <laughs> back right there. He got it to the 26. They need to get to the 28 for a first down. So third. And a long two coming up. Parker back in there now. But they down the middle of the tight end, Alexander got it perfectly in stride out to the 47-yard line, first down. That was a nice throw and a heck of a catch. Actually, that was the best throw that either quarterback has made in the game so far. Going to the big tight end, they overloaded, put both tight ends to this side, and then just released one right here and threw off this linebacker. All you have to do if you're the quarterback is make sure number 46, Renfo, doesn't intercept it. There's a seam right there. When you got a big target like that, you just put it in the area, and Steven Alexander gobbles it up. First down at the 48-yard line. Got 21 yards, and now they go back to the ground, and Parker is stood up at the 50. And it was Nava again, the sophomore linebacker out of Mesquite, Texas, who made the hit. Oklahoma has used a almost a two-quarterback system almost mm -hmm. this year with Eric Moore and Fuente, and I, I really thought we would see more of Moore in this game, but the injury has forced Dick Winder to use Justin in a lot of different ways, and so far the offense is clicking very well for yes, this Oklahoma is. team. They go to a slot formation here with the tight end in the slot. And straight up the middle and to about the 45 goes Fazan. 32 or 3 short of the first down. But back in Texas territory, trailing by 3 with 9.45 left. And there's more. Yep. Junior out of right here in Dallas and a heck of a player, exciting player, and uh, still suffering from that groin injury. Yeah. He didn't play a year ago in this Texas game, and it doesn't look like he's going to play this year. Last week he had 70 yards on the ground and was 5 out of 9 passing in the loss to Kansas, and OU wants a timeout. Dick's over there trying to get it called, and his players don't see him. He was halfway out to the hash mark, and nobody saw it. They wish they would have. Nava drops Parker way back at the 47-yard line. Well, Dick's upset, but he's probably upset with himself because he more than likely he had the wrong formation called with that play. Didn't want it run, but you can't assume the quarterback's going to look over at you on the bench and see what's happened. Justin, I think, is upset. He's signaling to Justin to call a timeout, but quarterback at that point's not looking over to the sideline. See Coach Blake behind him. 
Very fortunate that time that that's the worst they got was a loss of six or seven yards. Boy, that just totally yep, thwarted the drive. That you was bet. a good looking drive they had going. And instead, they've got Shackelford into punt. Oklahoma's already had two punts this year return for touchdowns. Boy, does he take a long time. Sure does, but nobody rushed him. And Mitchell just waits on this line drive at the 13. And Hodges got maybe to the 17, and he's swarmed under by the white jerseys. If I'm Texas, I'm looking at that and saying, I got to come after this guy. ABC's College Football's online live with scores, stats, and highlights all from today's games. You can play trivia, chat, and sound off with a fans poll. All in America online keyword, ABC Sports. Now the keywords for Texas there, keyword was defense, and uh, Nava was a big part of stopping OU's offense there. He had a couple big plays, including the one that forced the punt. And so the Longhorn offense will take over at its own 18-yard line. Two tight end set will be Ricky Williams on the give, and Ricky Williams into the clear across the 30. Ricky Williams cuts outside. He's got about 25 before Oklahoma can track him down. Pee Wee Woods got out there, but Ricky Williams got 27 yards for the Longhorns. Texas has run this counter play about 10 times in the game so far. You're going to see a block down on this side, and these two guys pulling them on the back side. Ricky just waits. Actually, almost three guys pull, but you get the big tackle. You follow him in the hole, big Octavius Bishop. And then when Ricky Williams gets his shoulder pads facing north-south, very fortunate Oklahoma was to hold that to maybe that big of a game. That's all. His third 100-yard game of the season for Ricky Williams. He's got 101 here in the first half. Oklahoma almost jumped offside. Williams this time brought down a gain of a yard and a half or two before Terry White made the stop. Last year, Ricky Williams had 99 yards and a touchdown on 21 carries. Doing better than that already today. 16 totes, 103 yards, and we still have 7.30 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, and remember last week against Oklahoma State, Ricky finished the first half six attempts for four yards. Right. You can understand why this Texas team was struggling. If you don't get your star, your featured guy off, this, this offense will struggle with the receivers they have on the team this well, year. Oklahoma State got everybody up close and kind of stuffed the run last week because Texas had so many receivers dropping the football. Here's Williams, who's bulldog down by Corey L. Ivey after a short game. Well, Brad, you know, this is working with Ricky Williams. There's no doubt about it. They got 100 yards. But I still think for this Texas offense to continue at this pace, James Brown has to help. Sooner or later, Bill Young and that Oklahoma defense will slam the door shut on that play. And then Brown has to get out of the pocket and do some things because right now it's a one-man offense. And it's wearing number 11. The 50-yard line, third down. James Brown wants a timeout. A little bit of confusion, maybe a man short in the yeah, Texas huddle. Yeah, they didn't have Bradley. The tight end wasn't in there that time. Six minutes, 33 seconds left in the half. Right now, Texas leads Oklahoma by three.
ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet trucks the most dependable longest lasting trucks on the road by Burger King where you can get your burgers worth Smith Barney a member of the Travelers Group Smith Barney they make their money the old fashioned way they earn it and the document company Xerox from the Ferris wheel Good. to the Cotton Bowl field and 6.33 remaining in the second quarter. 10-7, Texas. It's a huge third down stop here for this Oklahoma defense. What do you do? Last time you were Bill Young, you blitzed and you got the penalty. Let's see what he dials up this time. James Brown, 50% on his third down conversion passing today. He's got third down along five here. Billy Brian White again in motion. Brown, plenty of time over the middle. Broken up. Incomplete. Nice play by Terry White yep. that time. That was one that was a pretty good looking play all the way around intended for Derek Lewis, who actually got a hand on it, but Terry White got a bigger hand on it, knocked I, it away. I actually I think they lined up Courtney Epps in a tight end position that time, Brad, and tried to sneak him out with a, like an angle route, a V route. A really nice stop because that was a pretty good, well thrown ball by Brown. So right now we're playing the game at midfield yeah. and another punt coming up. We're playing a punt game and we've got two of the worst punting teams in college football. <laughs> 102 and 109 against each other. But the good thing for us, it's right at midfield, so we're looking right down at the line of scrimmage. Here's Schultz to kick. And this was a oh, bad man. punt. Man, Off the oh, side man. of his foot. Might get one of those great rolls, though, and it does. Unbelievable. Going to go down inside the five. That one looks magical in the stat sheet. It looked horrible coming off his foot. There you see Division I net punting. The other team in Texas doing pretty well. These two teams, even though they've had a lot of practice, not so. If, if I'm Oklahoma, as bad as Texas punts the ball, Brad, I put three guys back there and catch some of those shanks. At the four-yard line, Oklahoma will now have to huddle in its own end zone. I think Oklahoma will take a couple first downs and leave halftime be happy. Mm -hmm. Second man to the seven-yard line, Benny Butler. I to remind you, coming up 4 o'clock Eastern tomorrow, 3 o'clock Central Pacific, the Las Vegas IRL. You'll see the results, a race that marks the end of Indy Racing's league season. It'll determine this year's champion, too. Tony Stewart leads the points race with 254 right now. Davey Hamilton right behind him at 244. Here we've got 547 remaining in the second quarter. Second down and long, play fake on a bootleg. Fuente comes up throwing, got Alexander, who's tight end. They're going to give him a first down. Forward progress out to the 15-yard line. Tough catch again by Alexander. He knew he was going to get popped, and Fuente got it in there to him. You know, Justin looked great on this play, Brad. Came out on the bootleg, and I believe it was Dusty Renfro is attacking the quarterback on this bootleg right in his face. Now watch Justin step into this throw. He doesn't bail. Watch. Steps into it. Here comes the big hit just as he lets it go. It's Brandon Nava. But that's what you have to do if you're a quarterback. When the pressure's on, you can't throw off the back foot, especially coming out. you got to let it go. And he let it go out for the first down at the 15. Alexander, a couple of catches for 31 yards. They both in first down grabs. Here comes oh, Parker. And DeMond with a great spin move, and he's out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. I think both our tailbacks are going to have 100 by halftime. Well, you know, we were here when UCLA, the, the Route 66 game, and, and I thought Skip Hicks was one of the best backs I've seen all year in college football. Now I'm watching this game. Ricky Williams over 100 yards. DeMond Parker says, hey, Skip Hicks, tackle this. And he puts it in the end zone. And the only confident here is the Texas defense. Demond wasn't <laughs> carrying that camera we gave him on this That's one. Right. He was a little quicker through the hole. And this time the fullback. That was a Billy Sims move by the That was. One, wasn't it? Uh, by that one. He came that one play. The this guy was spun right off. Of the of time. Time. of course, Billy Sims, the Heisman Trophy winner here in Oklahoma, and made me a lot of money with the Detroit Lions. I just <laughs> turned around just and, yeah, just turned around and <laughs> handed it to him, and I didn't even have to shower That's after right. <laughs> Parker, close to century mark. See, now with 4.40 to go, this Oklahoma offense can start to open up. Second and seven. Uh -oh. Wow. Well, that one's incomplete, I believe, as it was Freeman who made what looked like a catch, but it came out as he was on his way down. Yeah, well, Dusty Renfro, I thought 
went to, that time through right into coverage. The linebacker that was acting the free safety and the outside technique right into it. And this was backing up. This was backing up. Yeah. You're not, no, no, no kidding on that one. And those are the ones you get picked off. Try to force it in there. Third down at seven. If Oklahoma is to score before halftime, they're going to need this one. Two out of six so far today. 11 men at the line of scrimmage for Texas. And the give, and they're going to get the first down and maybe a whole bunch more. Demond Parker, he's gone. Holding penalty. Silly foul. Flagged down at the 46-yard line. A meaningless foul downfield that time. Would have been a 65-yard touchdown run. I think it was Mo Little, number 18, who was blocking downfield, and it was a silly, silly foul. Mo Little, who they say maybe is the best blocking wide receiver in the Big 12. Well, this one he should have let just go away. Right, there's no doubt about it. And it happened right in front of the Texas bench, and there was a 50 guys right side of your screen. You're going to see Mo Little right there. He's getting a grab on Joe Walker. Watch the jersey with his right hand. Yep. You see the pull. Very, very obvious on the play. Really unneedlessly, uh, needlessly type of pen. Would have been a great looking touchdown run, but bring it all back. Yep. Another one of those penalties that is killing really this Oklahoma offense. It has been all year. Five already. And that one, you can almost add 65 yards to that one. 45 yards on five penalties, but they just lost a 65-yard touchdown. And when you add into that the fact that this team has turned the ball over 15 times in five games already this year, that's three a game. You can draw up any offense you want. You can have great players on defense. You're going to lose with those type of stats. You're right. So Parker. Still not over, though. Still first and 10. Plenty of time. It's not a killer. It's just a morale first killer. As Dick Winder this time calls another timeout. And Jarrell Jackson this time saw him. Yeah, at least somebody <laughs> saw him this time. Timeout. The clock stopped, 419. Remaining, and the Boo Birds are out for the first time today. Yeah, for who, though? There's yeah, just you're as never many quite people. Sure. <laughs> half the stadium's in orange, the other half's in crimson, so you don't quite know. 10-7. With a timeout see, taken by Oklahoma. See, if that's if, you're, if I'm a player, I'm happy about that. I always just say that's the other guy. Yeah, that's the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not yelling at us. So they've had their chat on the sideline. Fuente has gone the entire way at quarterback for the Sooners with uh, Eric Moore again, his groin injury hampering him today. And it looks now like we probably won't see him. No, and Fuente's really playing well in this game. Justin started off well last year in, in 1996 season for this football team as a as a freshman football player, but the last four games of the year, he only hit 30% of his passes, and that's why Eric Moore climbed back into this quarterback race and made it a little bit of a controversy. You can see right there, three of seven, made some good throws, but with those four incompletes, it's killing him. Well, two to Alexander is tight, and then the one that have really helped. Here's Parker, this time DeMond slips on his own, only got about a yard. Dusty Renfro there to make sure he got no more than that yard. Renfro the leading tackler on this Texas team. And he is a good one. Junior out of Alvarado, Texas. Calling the plays on the defensive side. Second down and nine. Just under four minutes left in the half. Second down nine. Ricky Williams scored a touchdown. Demond Parker scored a touchdown. Phil Dawson kicked a field goal for Texas. And that's where we stand. Eighth play of the drive. Blitz on Fuente. Going to go deep, man open, and he overshot it. Had Parker split out as a wide receiver, and he had his man beat, Donald McGowan out there. I'll tell you, if I was coaching this guy, I just don't know if I could control myself on those type of throws. You work all game to get a guy in a matchup like that. You get Parker, gonna, it's going to be a touchdown. If you just put a little air under it, throw it up there like a punt, there's no one back there, and Fuente just throws it so really nobody can catch it, like he's throwing the ball away. Those are the type of mistakes that are just killing you when your quarterback can't make simple plays. That's a penalty for Oklahoma. 12 men in the huddle. One of them ran off late. And it'll be their sixth penalty. Yep. Substitution is what held out yeah, trying Mike, to tell us. Michael Rose broke the huddle. They had 12 in the huddle, and only one ran off late. Gary Moeller would say, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to pick on Michigan when I'm this many miles away. <laughs> well, I mean, that was that a coaching Good place goal. to do yeah. it. <laughs> you there see he goes. Off. Michael Rose right here. That's Too the late. penalty. And that's 
you know, a huge disadvantage to the defense because you don't know which guy's going to run off, whether it's a wide receiver or a fullback like this. That's third down and 14. This drive started at their own four-yard line. It was going real well until yeah. that holding call. With a touchdown involved. Mm -hmm. And they get positive yardage again as it's Pazand who takes it out to the 49. Got about nine out of it. That was just a play so they could punt the ball more comfortably, to tell you the truth. Oklahoma didn't want a big turnover towards the end of the half. But now, Bob Texas, I'm coming after this punt. Jack LaPorte has been very slow getting rid of these punts. He looks like it's batting practice back there. It's the way he's been fielding these snaps and taking his time. But there's two men back for Texas in both Mitchell and Brian White. He is the up man about 15 yards in front of him. They appear to have the return on, but again, it's taken Shackelford a long time to get those kicks away with the left foot. He's not a guy that came to OU as a cutter on scholarship. He sort of walked on after his baseball eligibility was up, and this one's going to end up being a good-looking play. Texas played that very conservatively. They didn't even want to catch the ball. They were playing for a fake. Hodges Mitchell just got out of the way of it. It goes 48 yards and dies at the three with 240 left in the half. There have been times when this matchup between Oklahoma and Texas was number one against number two. We're going to take you back right now. 17th meeting of a number one against number two. As Smith Barney remembers, 81. Nine seconds left. Top rank USC trails number two, Oklahoma, 24-21. John Mazur finds tight end. Fred Cornwell, six yards out for the game winner, and the Trojans beat the Sooners 28 to 24. There was a time back in 63 in the game they called the game of the century at that time, number two against number one, and it was Tommy Novus and the Texas Longhorns defense that shut down the Sooners. Texas went on to be 11 and 0 and beat Navy and Roger Staw back in the Cotton Bowl for the national championship. On first down, Ricky Williams. I'm just going to try to get some breathing room. Oklahoma's going to take a quick timeout. Yep. Oklahoma has two timeouts left, so they're going to force Texas to make a first down. 2.35 remaining. James Brown's gone the whole way on a bad wheel. Dean's down with more on that on the sideline. Well, you know, guys, sometimes you have to give it up, and I'm giving my body up for this story right here. All right, let's take a look <laughs> down here at the ankle. Right below the bone there is where James Brown's injury has occurred. It's a deep bone bruise right in there. When he gets it hit, it kills it. Now, he can go and play for a good portion of the game, but as the game goes along, it tires out. And he probably can't make as many big plays late in the game because of that. But that's the problem with him. The problem with Oklahoma right now is that even though they're backed up on the one-yard line, guys, last week, as you know, Kansas busted one 99 yards for a touchdown, and Oklahoma will be watching against that today. And you just lost any chance for a sandal <laughs> commercial. Hey, that's with, the ugliest that, foot that, I've ever put seen. Put that thing back in his sock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cover that up. All right. Well, just, hey, Dino, you know, yeah. if there's any smell problems, blame it on Bevo. He's right over your shoulder right there, okay? <laughs> Out to the five went Ricky Williams. Williams over the 100-yard mark in this first half. There's Bevo, and he's on his feet. He was resting earlier. And Dino's just right over yeah, here. Bevo and Dino. We got them both down there in the end zone. Texas made a late substitution. I'll be lucky to get the snap off. Power. Delay, counter, and only got a couple yards this time. It's been a big gainer a couple of times today. Rocky Bright made the tackle. Rocky Bright is two, two of two true freshmen that are playing defensive end for this Oklahoma That's right. team. Why don't I say that again? One of two true freshmen mm -hmm. that are playing for Oklahoma today. He and Corey Callens are the real deal, according to Coach Blake. And he says they will come on and be great football players before they leave Oklahoma. We've got 2.30 left in this half and a time to check in in New York with John Saunders. John? Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, all the day's scores and highlights, although, Todd, really only two games with national championship implications. Yeah, Ohio State at Penn State, and then later tonight on ESPN, it's Florida at LSU. But several ranked teams playing games that there could be a letdown as they look ahead to bigger games down the road. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. All right, guys, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. And we said we might have 200-yard rushers by halftime. We yeah. do. How long was that one that Parker had called back to? 65. 65. Yeah, don't have that. You know, that's 177 in the first half. See how fast I did that? You did that well. Yeah. 
You didn't skip all those classes no, at Purdue. That was those extra two years uh -huh. of get addition. Late <laughs> at Purdue's schedule there. Third and six. James Brown in his own end zone. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Great coverage. Yeah, it was. Nice coverage out there by Terrence Malone, who's in there for Travian Smith, who's out with the injury. See, without the great ankle, I think John McAvick, who might have thought, let's move the quarterback out of the pocket, just straight drop back, James is going to throw, and that's why I, he just doesn't look comfortable. He looks a little tentative in the pocket. And that's what Bill Young saw on film, he told us, and that's why James right now is 5 for 15. Not throwing the ball at all well early in the game. Oklahoma appears to have the return on for Jarrell Jackson, and why not? He's a good one. We've talked earlier about the fact he took one for a touchdown last year. Now Schultz has to kick from deep in his own end zone. High kick. Let's see how Jackson plays it. He'll field it at the 49. Going to reverse field. Almost found a seam. I thought if he would have just yep. kept on going where he was going, he might have been off to the races, but Texas pulls him down after about a five-yard return. Coming up tonight, John and Todd alluded to this game in the SEC, a big one on ESPN. Number one ranked Florida, number 14 LSU in a supercharged SEC battle. Doug Johnson in the picture there leading the Gators. And Jack Quez. Green is some kind of receiver. He's a guy who likes to look to LSU, having lost Cecil Collins, the diesel. They still got Falk running back there. That'll be some kind of scene tonight in the SEC on ESPN. First and ten, straight drop, and now Fuente trying to buy himself some time. Wide open down the middle, had a man incomplete. It was Mo Little. He threw it behind him. And it's incomplete, second and ten. Yeah, I think, Randy was throwing that ball to Gerald Williams, number ten, behind Mo Little, and Mo Little knocked it down. It was a nice play, but he, he knocked it down. This time, the front four put a little pressure, but let's see if we got a little way with a little old left guard right here. Sean Rogers, the little take down. It was Sean Rogers, was in the backfield that time. That's the freshman making a play. Fuente only three out of nine. Second and ten at the 46. And it's Parker. Demond Parker and another holding call, I think, coming up. As this could negate about a 20-yard run again. 19 yeah. officially, but a flag down at the 38-yard line. Demond Parker's going, come on, guys. You guys. <laughs> you guys, you guys. <laughs> Second holding call negates a big gainer. And it happened behind the play again. Demond Parker had already broken the line of scrimmage, and then the shove and the hold came behind. I think it was Stephen Alexander, number 80, that got the holding call against Cal. And I hate to go back to it. The game that I think Oklahoma really wished, thought they had, they had five holding penalties in that game. They had over 100 yards, well over 100 yards in penalties and, and, in that game, and they're going that direction yeah, they're, again. they're right on track, aren't they? Mm. Got to be killing John over on the sideline. And it's still second and 12. There's still 149 left, although you is out of timeouts. Fuente. In and out of the hands of Parker probably just as well as Nava had him in his sights, and that would have probably been about a loss of one. I don't, you, you never know when you're up here what the quarterback's read is in this thing. But that time, Sooners had three receivers flanked to the top of the screen, and he goes the opposite way. Going to go long there and a hook right in here, and I think both of them are open. And he's going, man, throw me the ball. And he comes back to Parker, who was covered. Right. Third and 12. Four receiver group for Fuente, and they will keep it on the ground. Parker drops for a loss. Cedric Woodard right there to meet him. Loss of about three. And after the best starting fuel position of the day for Oklahoma, they're back on their side of the field. Cedric Wood is number 50 right here. Watch him beat outside. Woodard, just true fresh, a true sophomore in his play, just plays off the block, goes outside, and really the block that time from Tim Macias was right into the running path of the ball carrier. Good looking play. Yeah, really surprised that well, Texas isn't taking a timeout here and going after this punter. Shackleford back, and yeah, that's two. Brian White. They're playing safe. You see Rose, the fullback, is the up man who is making the calls. Shackleford, this time they did get a little pressure, and he still got the kick away easily. Brian White takes a fair catch call. 
out at the 18 yard you line. You can see from the fair catch call this time that Texas had a punt safe on. They were protecting against a fake punt by Oklahoma, and Brian White was under orders to just fair catch it. Valvoline halftime 97 coming up in 45 seconds as you watch. That's not one of my passes. <laughs> no laughing, all right? <laughs> That's right. That's a punt. <laughs> and White takes a fair catch. They had had Hodges Mitchell back there most of the game, and then they put him back in a dual set. That time it was Brian White all by himself. As Gary said, they had the punch safe called, and now Texas from its own 18-yard line. They've got two timeouts left. Yeah, I, I think they, they play it very safe, though, here. They don't want to make a mistake. Ricky Williams, he can make you make a mistake. Spins out to the 25. Got seven quick more yards. Rodeau knocked him off his feet. 117 for Ricky Williams. So he and Demond Parker have given us the positive show today for the first two quarters. Other than that, there have been some penalties that have killed both teams, and the passing games have been unattractive at best. Yeah, you see the front line blocking for Texas right there, but now Oklahoma's playing it very safe, very wide rush lane. Whoa, fumble! And Oklahoma's got it. Ricky see, Williams took a huge hit at the 25-yard line, and Malone got the ball for the Sooners. I tell you, I just don't understand sometimes what the strategy is to run that play with 12 seconds to go in the half. If you're not going for a touchdown, please just take a knee. We've seen these type of things happen over and over again in games. If you're not attacking, you're better off just to take a knee and let the half end. Here comes Ricky Williams, and he takes a huge pop right there, boom, by Terrence Malone. And then Malone, in a great individual play, is also the guy that dives back and gets the football. Puente with 10 seconds left in the half. Pump fake, loads it. Goes complete, Little's got it, and he's out of bounds. This is a chance for a field goal. Four seconds remaining and a first down as we head down to Dean. Guys, Alexander will now come on the field. Oklahoma risk a lot there with no timeouts. I think really they couldn't have kicked the field goal where they were with Alexander. Watch him limp out there. But now in this field position, they're going to be able to convert it. But back there, they had no option. Well, we'll oh, no, see if he can convert it. You're right, Dean. That, that had to be the strategy. But uh, yeah, man, oh, man. Alexander from the 31 yard, uh, 21 yard line, a 31 yard field goal. This would be a three three points basically for Oklahoma before halftime. They had no timeouts left, and Alexander's got it up, and he's got it good. Wow, that is a gift. Early Christmas present for John Blake and the Sooners as Ricky Williams fumbles. A great play defensively by Terrence Malone gives Oklahoma a halftime tying field goal. We're 10-10 at halftime in Dallas. It probably shouldn't be 10-10 no. as we welcome you back. 90-second meeting between these two teams. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson along with you. A gift, you got to admit it, a free three at the end of that second quarter well, for OU. I, absolutely. Texas really wasn't trying to score. They were running out the half, just doing something they should have. They shouldn't have been taking a knee. Got Oklahoma back into this game 10-10. But Texas really only had one good drive in this first half. It followed a roughing the passing penalty by Oklahoma. That was the first penalty. And then... Ricky Williams and James Brown teamed up for a 65-yard drive for this Texas team. They used a little bit of the counter tray action. They got back in the pocket. James Brown did what he does best, throw the ball short so far with Brian White. This was the best play Brown made all half. Scrambled it out a little bit, hit Brown out to the outside that time. Then another penalty from Oklahoma on a third down play. Got it first and goal for Texas. Ricky comes with the counter tray again. Gets it down to the goal line on an almost fumble play. And then they stuff it in for the only touchdown for this Texas team. Could have been 17-10 at half. But Mo Little right here should have been less little on this one. <laughs> Too much blocking that play. And that turned over a touchdown, a 65-yard touchdown by Devon Parker. Mo Little with a penalty that wasn't and negated a 65-yard, as Gary said, what would have been a touchdown in the statistics in the first half. You're going to see after the kickoff a ton of penalties against Oklahoma, and that has been something that's been their downfall in what has been a two and three season so far coming into this one. Dawson to kick a mile high. And it'll be fielded at the 20-yard line and down at the 22. Just like that, it was Rose, the fullback, who fielded the kickoff. 
Brad, both teams is ha are having success running the ball, but it's the passing game for both teams that really isn't coming up. The quarterbacks aren't doing it. As you can see what's highlighted, seven penalties by this Oklahoma team. They're averaging 60 yards a game, and they're right on the average with another half to play. <laughs> That's right, and that doesn't even tell the story of how big the no. penalties are because of when they occurred and what they took away. Right, 60 yards plus another 100 on top of it that That's they right. gained. Come out with a three wide out look with Alexander, the fullback, the tight end in the slot. Here comes Demon Parker picking up where he left off in the first half. He goes all the way out to the 38 yard line. 17 more yards for this tailback out of Tulsa. As you look at how even these two teams are, they might not be great any longer, but they're close. That's right. <laughs> Right to this point, 181 to 180, and it's it's you know it's not like cricket. You don't keep these games going from year to year. <laughs> First down out at the 39. As Parker's having a huge day, so is Ricky Williams for Texas, with the exception of that fumble in the end of the second quarter. Parker hit the backfield, broke off that one, and got to the 40. He got a yard out of nothing. Tony Holmes is the guy that finally knocked him down. Brandon Nobbins having an outstanding football game so far. He's getting in the backfield. Maybe he's not making the tackle, but you'll see him right here coming up. He'll make Parker adjust his play. And when you're attacking like that, you know, Parker's going to make the first guy miss. But now watch. That still allows just enough for that secondary to come up to make the play. Second down and eight. And the ball right across the 40-yard line of the shooter. Parker again and tripped up in the backfield. And a nice defensive play. Sean Rogers, the freshman out of LaPorte, Texas, made the hit a 300 pounder. Brad, Sean Rogers, when we were here two weeks, well, how long ago? UCLA. When we were game. in Austin. Yeah, right? you're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John McAvick said, We were not going to let this guy play. He's too good. We're going to redshirt him. But Chris Akins goes down. Casey Hampton goes down. Freshman, battlefield promotion. He's in there. He and Atlanta Davis now, two freshmen playing a lot on the defensive front for Texas on a third and eight. Fuente is going to loft one out and just over the intended receiver, Gerald Williams. Fuente As we check in with Dean Blevins, you know? After the half, I visited with both the coaches a few minutes ago, and a little bit of a surprise, John McAvick said he expected Eric Moore to come out for Oklahoma, that they expected some option plays, and so, of course, Justin Fuente starts. John told me that logistically that they were going to continue doing what they were doing. John Blake told me that he would mix in both Fuente and Eric Moore, told me that they talked about the holding penalties, and lastly, he said, guys, we're going to go play this game like it's 0-0. Let's go win the game, and he said he felt that Oklahoma would win the football game. Well, it is almost 0-0, and -zero, we've got ones <laughs> on the front of both. Of them. You see the adjustment by Texas putting two guys back there to catch the punt. Good move. Both White and Mitchell back there. It's Hodges Mitchell, and he dropped it at the 13 and goes down right there. Well, Had it, mishandled it, and then Slaughter got down there to do just that to him. Uh, the return of minus one. Shackleford, we've been picking out his punting all day. He's doing a pretty good job. Well, he's downwind, and he heads <laughs> unwell on that one. But Texas had time, made the adjustment, put two guys, no more rolling punts from Shackleford. So, again, starting inside the 15-yard line, Texas down at the 12. Almost 76,000 in the stadium. I don't know how many other hundreds of thousands are outside at the fair. And we're in here in the third quarter with 13.05 to go. Toss to Ricky Brown. And the fullback cuts outside. Nice gain out to the 18. Bumped out by Corey Ivey. Pick up of six. Ricky Williams at time. Nice job blocking. Getting out in front of him. Giving a little room for Ricky Brown to carry the ball. It has not been a quarterback's day as far as throwing the football. That's no, for sure. that's for sure. <laughs> Second down here, long four coming up. James is five for 15 and a half. Here comes Ricky Williams on that counter to the left side this time, and he's got the first down and quite a bit more. Not knocked out until he got to the 36-yard line. Tight rope the last five yards or so, and Ricky picks up 18. That's really been the most successful play for this Texas football team in the first half of this game. But, you know, Brad, we were talking about both quarterbacks struggling. If you look at the, the Big 12 stats in passing, you'll see something stands out here. 
I'm going to quiz you. This is your quiz. What stands out? Uh, I don't see James Brown there. You are correct. One of the best efficiency passers. Also, the last half, no Colorado quarterback. That's amazing. Mm. And James is not going to be too proficient back at the 25 as Martin Chase drilled him. The senior out of Lawton, Oklahoma, another 300-pounder, and he's part of that duel inside. He and Kelly Gregg are good players. And Texas gives up the sack, and it's way back at the 25-yard line. Oklahoma's done a nice job sacking the quarterback this year. They came in with 15, and were on pace to maybe break their school single-season record. And they force a second and 21 with that sack. Draw play, Ricky Williams. Got about seven of it back. Dale Allen made the tackle. The Oklahoma defense is playing down and distance perfectly. They're going to force Texas in that situation to run the draw, wide rush patterns, keep James Brown in the pocket where they believe he's a rather average quarterback with this group of receivers surrounding him. They have not thrown a pass, I don't believe, today to Courtney Epps, have they? They have, well, just one, and it was deflected. Shotgun here. Brown back. Downfield almost intercepted. It was intended for Corey Epps, and Cedric Stevens was right there with him. And it's fourth down, and Texas will have to give it up. That was the textbook of what Bill Young is trying to accomplish with his pass coverage there. Each man covers a man to their outside shoulder near the sidelines. They force it to the middle where the free safety and the middle linebacker is standing there. That almost forced a turnover. Jarrell Jackson drops back. Punt return formation. You keep almost waiting for something to explode out of Jackson. As Schultz is set to kick on a fourth and 14. Oklahoma. Put a little pressure on Schultz. Not a good kick. Unless it takes a perfect hop, it won't be returnable. Almost one of the up men got in the way. That could have easily been touched by an Oklahoma player, Trey Slaughter. It doesn't. It rolls dead with 11-16 left in the third quarter. Eric Moore, junior quarterback out of right here. Carter High School in Dallas is the new Sooner signal caller taking over for Justin Fuente, who went four for 12 for 60 yards. His day may not be over, but it is for the moment anyway. And this is the first look we've had at Eric today. His team starting from its own 25-yard line. 10-10 tie, 11-16 left third quarter. More on the give to Parker and dropped in his tracks by Aaron Humphrey. Good looking play. He's a hard guy to bring down one on one. When you consider the fact that Oklahoma's best down this year has been first down, Texas has done a good job at him this today. Brad, 35 of the 140 first down plays that Oklahoma has run this year have gone for more than 10 yards. That has not been the case yeah. today. Only three first down plays have been successful for this Oklahoma team. Second and 13 here. Moore trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And may have. It's going to be about third down and 10. And Justin Puente, as we mentioned, there's his numbers today. It has not been a quarterback's dream as far as throwing the ball around on either side today. No, that, that's true. And, uh, you know, it's not like Oklahoma has ever featured a great passing attack. The third all-time best passer for Oklahoma is Jack Milton. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he ran the wishbone. They had a lot of those wishboners. Third down and 10. And three for 10 on the day. And more incomplete. No flag. Now, there was no interference right there. I don't even think the ball was catchable anyway. No. Pretty good coverage by Tony Holmes. Re remember, Brad, in college football, it does not have to be a catchable football. If it's uh, interference is interference, you'll see it. Tony Holmes has coverage. He's going the ball to Mo Little. Good target. He did actually grab him, but I don't think... That could have been called, but it wasn't on target enough to be caught, that's for sure. That was a good matchup right there. They had their big receiver yep. on Tony Holmes. That ball could have been completed. Eighth punt for Brian Shackelford today. <laughs> Senior out of McAllister, Oklahoma, is getting a workout. Again, dual receivers back in Brian White and Hodges Mitchell. 
still Texas put very little pressure on the punter today to this point anyway. And now did Oklahoma take too much time. <laughs> that ball. Sure did. Delay of game. Delay of game. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. We'll back it up to the 20. And Coach Blake's just kind of shaking his head over there, knowing that the penalties continue to mount. It's going to be in double digits again pretty soon with penalties. They've got eight. If Oklahoma does not win this football game, I think you can trace it right back to their penalties in the first yep. half. And number one of them just out and out cost him a touchdown. See what two guys back there gives you? That Ryan ball White. That ball would have rolled 20 more yards if they didn't have two guys to grab that ball. Ryan White got about 11 yards on the return, in fact. And in Oklahoma territory. Next Saturday, live, 3.30 Eastern, America's biggest road show rolls on. Regional coverage. You can see it's Florida State against Georgia Tech. Big Ten battle at Northwestern. We'll be in Arizona with the Huskies. And a and in Kansas State. Check your local listings for the games in your area or call your cable operator for information on games available on pay-per-view. Brad, that's Danny Rocco, the special teams coach for Texas, and he's the one that came up with that change-up, putting two twin guys back there. That's helped. Yeah, it has. Ricky Williams took a two-yard loss and turned it into a three-yard game. Yeah. Martin Chase should have made a tackle or got the handoff, one of the two. He was in the backfield, wasn't he? You know, Bill Young has coached some great defensive tackles at Ohio State. Danny Wilkinson yeah, was a number one draft pick. And he down, said that seven. Martin Chase and Kelly Gregg are the best pair of defensive tackles he's ever coached in college football. That's saying a mouthful. Boys, it ever. One at 280, one at 301. Ricky Williams got three at second down and seven. At the Oklahoma 46 yard line, wide in motion. And Brown throws complete to the 40. A little bit short of a first down, I think, to Steve Bradley, who normally is the blocking That's tight end of the two. And Terry White made the stop. It's going to be third down and about a yard. See what the tight end can do oh, for you in an offense. That time, Oklahoma had it bracketed. They had a linebacker inside. They had a strong safety outside. You just turn around. It's like a long handoff. Boom, hit him in the numbers. Now you set up a third and short. And there's the... Full house backfield, Ricky Williams, first down to the 38-yard line. Remember, that's the same formation that Texas used against Nebraska when James kept the ball and threw the pass that supposedly put John McAvitt in good stead here for <laughs> Texas. That didn't last long, did it? No, it didn't. Play good for after Texas that first game, down. a loss you know what? in their bowl game and then two losses. So they've lost three of their right. last five coming into this one. That's like bringing home flowers one time for your wife. She expects it every weekend, you know. You do <laughs> and it she one wonders time. what you did wrong. <laughs> That's right. yeah. John gave him flowers once. Now they want it every weekend. <laughs> He's, uh, he'd have to own his own florist shop. <laughs> That's right. At the 38, first down, Texas. They have gone without a penalty today, which is... A strong seat for them compared to Oklahoma. Flared it out to Ricky Williams out of the backfield. Down the sideline, and Williams has it inside the 15. Well, if your wide receivers can't catch it, just keep throwing to your tight end, your fullback, and in this case, your tailback. Simple game plan, is it? At least it seems simple up here. The adjustment has been made by John Makovic. Remember, you've got a wide receiver that maybe they don't have the experience. So you go to your tight ends, you get the ball to Ricky Williams. They want him to get 30 touches, doesn't matter. He hands it off. There's going to be a blitz right here. Ricky Williams is going to see it. He's hot. They throw him the ball, and it works. Watch the blitz when the linebacker comes in, throws it out. Actually, did. They just played it very straight. It was just an arrow. Brown, seven completions in this game to six different receivers. And a first down at the 14-yard line. 10-10 tie. Texas trying to change that. Here's that counter. Ricky Williams, easy touchdown, but there's flags all over the place. And I think Ricky Williams even knows it. He just kind of tiptoed in as if to say, I know this one's coming back. Brad, you know, I think the play was whistled dead before it started that time. Dead ball. Dead ball, ball, ball. final legal procedure. Yeah. I think everybody froze on that play. It so, looked a little nicer. Yeah. Not as bad as Demon Parker's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they'll pull that one back to the 19-yard line, where it's going to be first and 15 there. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dean Blevins here in the third quarter of the Cotton Bowl. And that's the first penalty. I just a moment ago mentioned Texas had gone without one. That's their first for just five yards. At the 19. 
Epps and White both wide outs there to the right side. They'll go with that counter again. Keep doing it till it doesn't work. This time it doesn't. And Williams has stopped for maybe a yard gain. Kelly Gregg in on the tackle. Ricky Williams and Damon Parker have done most of the work today in total yardage for these two teams. You know, looking at that shield, did you see that picture of Katzenmoyer and that Ooh. shield? Wasn't that a great that shot? That one should end up on a billboard someplace. <laughs> you can see the play in the reflection of his yep. mask, as you can see it there in Ricky's. Much like that. Second down and 14. James Brown straight drop quickly throws out. Would have had to have been a one-handed catch by Derek Lewis, who almost hauled it in, and had he been able to, he might have been to the end zone because he wasn't covered very well. Watch the motion and what it does to Terry White, number 13 this time, who had him in motion. I think this is Terry right here. You're going to see motion, and then he comes back. Watch what Terry White does as he thinks he's going to go across. Whoops. And you see him, he says, oh, my goodness, what's happened? I got that guy. Now, James Brown says it, sees it, says, I'm going to get it to him quick, and we get a one-handed stab. Boy, Ty Detmer would be all over that receiver, so wouldn't when he? When I said he wasn't covered very well, I guess I was right, huh? They're going to get 12 men in the huddle. They're going to get 12 men in the huddle. Texas is going to get a illegal substitution penalty. Steve Bradley was trying to hustle off the second tight end, and that's the second time we've seen that. One call against each team. It was uh, Rose, the fullback, trying to get off the field in the first half for Oklahoma. And now Texas has come up with back-to-back -back penalties when they had the ball down at the 14-yard line. Yeah, that's a little tough. You're trying to substitute. That's the way college and pro football has went with substitutions. You know what I wonder, Brad, is is that an automatic penalty or could the quarterback turn around and call timeout before that play stops? I mean, it looks like they're stopping the play right. before it goes any longer. Very interesting. I'll have to study up. <laughs> Give Dave Perry a call. Right. Third down and 19. Pretty different situation now for James Brown. Back to throw. Got a man open and got him. It's Epps. At the one, and it's first and goal, Texas. 22 yards, and Brown rifled that one to Epps. Rideau this time is going to be upset at himself. He's got man-to-man -man coverage, and he has help inside. See the outside technique? But he goes for the fake. He's got a free safety sitting on the inside of the field right there, and he bites on the post fake. Cardinal sin by a cornerback. If the post is thrown, it's going to be intercepted by the free safety anyway. That's a bad play. First and goal, Ricky Williams, touchdown, Texas. His second of the day from a yard out. Just when it looked like that drive might falter as others have due to penalty. The strike down to Epps at the one, and Ricky Williams does the rest. Third and long following a penalty, and that is a killer for a defensive coordinator who had the perfect defense called, and then they make a, set, a mistake in the secondary, and it costs us seven points. Bill Dawson for the point after, and Texas is back in front by a touchdown. With 6.24 left in the third quarter. James Brown in a long yardage situation to Epps, and then Ricky Williams took it in. All brought to you by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. By Genuine Chevrolet, the car is more Americans trust. By Bud Light, you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. Ricky Williams goes in from a yard out for the second time today, and Texas has regained the lead 17 to 10. Dawson to kick. And again, he's gone with a high, short pop fly. They're trying to keep it away from those deep men, and again, it's fielded right at the 20 yard line. And it's Chris Lewis who weaves his way for about 10 on the return. That's where OU will go to work on offense. Let me show you again the help. Here's the free safety. Cedric Stevens. Now watch how he reads James Brown's eyes on this. He's the help in the middle. Rodney Rideau, that's right, right there. There he is. There's the free safety. He slipped, but it doesn't make any difference. A cardinal sin is committed to the outside by Rodney Rideau. He should have known he had a help in the middle of the field. He should have stayed with his outside technique. It would have been 
harmless play. Keep in mind, Oklahoma got a Joseph and the other Corey T. Ivy. The two starting defensive backs not in this game due to a one-game suspension by Coach John Blake. Whether that would have happened with him in there, we don't know. But here comes Demond Parker. Made a couple of men miss and cuts back across midfield. And he got about 20. Aaron Humphrey tracked him down. Boy, is he fun to watch. He really is. And he, and he really does remind me of Billy Sims. Now, some people say he's another Barry Sanders, who also was a number 20 for the Detroit Lions. But he's more Sims-like in his size and the way he makes people miss with his little shuffle. Gets into the secondary. Watch this. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Make you miss. Woo! Boy. There is no way in the secondary you're going to bring this guy down with a tackle. And he is heading toward a thousand yard season. Oh, what a hit by Aaron Humphrey. <laughs> Ouch, so much for the option. There was only one option for Eric Moore. It was flat on his shoulders. Well, the option means you're supposed to pitch it. <laughs> he wishes he had. Here comes Humphrey. That is the option man. That's the quarterback's man in the option football. End man on the line of scrimmage. Pitch it. Oh, man. That one's on you, Eric Moore. <laughs> oh, boy, that hurts. <laughs> you bet. you got to always anticipate when you run the option that the end man is going to attack you. And a lot of times that end man, Humphrey, is just delaying, delaying. This time, he attacked. Second down at 13. Alexander, the tight end, in motion across the field. And it's Parker. And Parker goes to the 50-yard line. As we check in with John Saunders. John, what do you got? Well, Brad, the big one today has been a very good one. Penn State has had the lead throughout the game, but Michael Wiley, a little halfback option to Steve Wisniewski, takes it 30 yards down to the one. From there, quarterback Joe Germain in, and he tosses this one to David Boston. Wide open in the end zone for the touchdown, and Ohio State grabs the lead for the first time today. It's now 2017. Brad. A dandy going on in State College. Here we've got the Longhorns by seven in the Big 12. Oklahoma, third down and long. Moore slinging it deep. Just overshot his intended receiver, and he had his man beat again. Tony Holmes had given up a step, and Little is hurt diving for that, holding his collarbone, it looks like. Yeah, he is. When you stretch out for that ball, your arm is extended and it pops as your elbow hits the turf. This wasn't a bad throw. Actually, it was pretty good coverage by Holmes. Everything was done pretty well. Ball just thrown maybe about a foot too long. So they check Mo Little. We'll remind you, prime time lineup tonight. A radio shock jock is the target of an angry listener on an all-new C-16. Followed by James Remar and James Belushi in total security. And Dylan McDermott in the practice. It's all new, and it's all tonight on ABC. Timeout with the injury with 419 remaining in the third quarter. The Longhorns by seven. If the Swami's been on that magic carpet since 1929, but that's how long the State Fair has been hosting this Red River shootout between Oklahoma and Texas, and uh, thousands and thousands of folks having a good time out here at the fairgrounds in Dallas. And we are as well with 419 left, 17 to 10. Texas in front. And another punt coming up from Oklahoma. Brian Shackelford. Been a busy kicker. Nine today. Brian White's back single right. return. When they, when they only keep one back, that means they're in a punt safe. Texas is. They're looking for the fake. And the kick. White will take the fair catch at about the eight-yard line. Just as he was coached. 41-yard punt. Ninth punt of the day for Shackelford. He dropped six inside the 20, so he's done a pretty good job of that. And the starting field position has not been the greatest today for the Longhorns. This time they'll be working from their own eight as they continue to work on Mo Little. He went down hard diving for that uh, pass off the hand of Eric Moore, trying to come up with that one. And he's their leading receiver as far as number of catches. Had a career high five last week. Well, you know, for the second straight week, Brad, uh, the third quarter has not been good to Oklahoma. A week ago, Kansas scored 17 points and they only had the ball for three minutes this week texas has had great success in the third quarter so far first down longhorns give it to ricky williams and ricky williams broke a tackle cuts outside and he's got 10 more 
as he continues to add to his total with 404 left let's check in with Dean guys Oklahoma felt coming into the game that it had some baseline numbers that it had to attain to win the football game in rushing yards the Sooners were looking for 250 yards and they're at 185 now they're ahead of the curve they're ahead of the curve on rushing attempts ahead of the curve on average per rush but they're only 25 percent in third down meaning nine punts and I'm telling you, you need a calculator to calculate the <laughs> mental errors. It is unbelievable. That is costing Oklahoma the game now as the Texas crowd is into the game for the first time. Yeah, and of course the coaches go in hoping for no mental errors, and they've had a ton of them today with those penalties that cost them touchdowns. A couple of times, Ricky Williams got about three more. Ricky's got 166 yards on the day. And a couple of one-yard touchdown plunges. Hey, Dino, uh, yeah. you wonder how much Oklahoma miss, misses Gana Joseph back there. You know, the guy who's calling out the signals back at the free safety spot and a lot of those mental errors. Well, he's a terrific player, and I think that, uh, you know, not only in pass coverage, but in run support right, as well. I, right. I know the secondary coach, Chris Thurman, was just sick about it when he was forced to be suspended again. This is the second time for him to be suspended, though. Second down and seven. Like they were going to come with a blitz, and here comes Hodges Mitchell, and he gives you a little bit of a different dance than Ricky Williams. A much smaller package. He got it out to the 27, short of the first down. Well, let's see if John Makovic dials up that play action play on third and short right here, like he did against Nebraska. John has the image of being very conservative, but if he prepares a play and he thinks it goes, this might be a situation where he could break the back of Oklahoma by coming up with a big play right here. They've got everybody stacked in tight. Lewis and a fumble. Pitch to Ricky Brown, and he dropped it. That and was that was a poor pitch. Well, Oklahoma's actually saying they have it. I think Ricky Brown got back on he top does. of it. But watch this pitch. It was behind Ricky Brown on the play. Went with a quick count, and the pitch never got to Ricky Brown's front number. That means in front of him. He had to turn. Well, there's two fours there. It's kind of hard oh, to yeah. determine. You try yeah. to hit the, the, the <laughs> far away. Watch him have to turn around and get this ball. As it's, see, it's on his left shoulder. It should have been to his right shoulder in that situation. Should have been the right four. Yeah. It was the left four. Right. And now it's four down. And time to punt. Jarrell Jackson is going to wait on it. He's trying to keep it out of his hands today. This high kick should negate a run back, although he is going to take it at the 44, and he goes down in his tracks. 38-yard kick, no return. Nice hang time there. Quentin Wallace made the play on special team. Yeah, Quentin Wallace did a nice job that time by not getting within two yards. He slowed down. He played it very good. John Blake. Team has made a lot of mistakes, but they're still in this football game. And he's part of our Home Depot coaches back today. 20th Sooner head coach and one of the youngest coaches in the country. He was a nose guard here, a member of a couple Big A championships. Ron Cooper and Dana Dimmel and uh, Dana Dimmel and uh, Rick Neuheisel, the only other coaches younger than him around college football. Fuente back in there and back in throwing, and now there's some punches being thrown on top of everything else. Steven Alexander is the big tight end, one of the most hotly recruited high school players coming out three years ago, now in his senior year, a three-year starter into his fourth year now, and uh, this one was designed for him the whole way. They put Justin Fuente back in, and he just came back to the big guy. Steven Alexander's second catch for him today that's covered 21 yards and a first down. And with that little skirmish at the end, you kind of feel Oklahoma getting puffed up a little bit here, down by a touchdown, and now oh flags boy. all over. Oh boy. I think it was Adam Carpenter that time, the left guard that jumped. Dead ball. And ball it start. is a legal procedure. On the offense, still first down. With a minute 26 left, another penalty just when they had a little bit of a head of steam going on. Ninth penalty, five of them against the Oklahoma offense. You know, both Eric Moore and Justin Fuente have said that the two-quarterback system does not add any more pressure to their game. Quick snap again. DeMond Parker broke through the first wave and almost got loose. Got close to the 30. 
Aaron Babineau knocked him off his feet or he would have been off to the races again. You know why he doesn't remind me of Barry Sanders and more of Billy Sims? Watch how he attacks the line of scrimmage when he comes up there. He doesn't dance around. Watch how he speeds up as he gets there and creases the hole. He makes you tackle him. He doesn't slow down and look for the big play. He forces you to face up on him and make the strong tackle. Fake it. And on the bootleg, Fuente directing traffic, running out of time, and has to throw it away. And a penalty marker down. There is a flag down at about the spot where he let that go. They're going to see he was over the line of scrimmage, maybe? That's what they're saying. But see, they, they got the wrong down marker. They're looking at the first down marker. It was the second down where it was started was way up at the 30-yard line. The referees got confused. Yeah, I don't I don't think. I they think were he was look, well behind the 30. They were looking at the first down. They're looking at this one. Come on, guys. Let's get back on that one. I don't think he ever approached the 30-yard line no, before no, they, he let go of this No, no. They're confused on the play. They're going to have to pick up that flag. You'll see it. See where the ball was thrown was not near the down marker, was near the 35-yard line, not the 30, and they're going to have to take that over. And they stuffed that flag back in the pants. So it's third down and almost five at the 30-yard line. Puente up quick. And a give. Parker, he didn't even get a yard. No. Sean Rogers is there to make the tackle. And it actually came out of the pile with a football. I'll tell you, we also shut off that play it was Aaron Humphrey, the defensive end. He refused to be pushed out of the way that time, and there wasn't much room, so Humphrey, for so Rogers could come in and make the play. Humphrey just stoned the blocker, and there was nowhere to run. Even on a good leg, I don't think Alexander could hit a 47-yard no. field goal. Maybe he could, but remember, the kicker is not a factor here. They go for it on fourth down and five at the Texas 30. Three wide receivers set. And the third quarter comes to a close before Fuente can get the play off. So that ends three. The Longhorns hanging on to a touchdown lead. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Set to start the fourth quarter with a key fourth down play and one interested defensive coordinator in Bobby Jack Wright. And he installed what is supposed to be a new attacking defense for Texas this year. They haven't been attacking enough today. Did they go for it here, Gary? Well, at the end of the third quarter, they were not going to blitz. Now, let's see. You know, they showed their defense. Oklahoma saw it. They went back to the sideline. Let's see if he changes up now, changes up the defense and comes after the quarterback. Let's see if they go with a quick snap. Looks like they are going to come after him. Long count by Fuente this time. He did a six-man rush. Straight drop, and they bring the pressure, and down he goes. There came the pressure, and there goes the quarterback, way back at the 45-yard line. See, that was a great, it was almost like a basketball play where you take the uh, timeout to see what the defense is going to do, and then you'll see the linebackers come in the picture. They had one heck of an inbounds play here yeah, tonight. Yeah, Dwight Kirkpatrick on block that time comes in, and you see Oklahoma actually messed themselves up. They thought it wasn't going to be a blitz. They played it as a non-blitzing situation. Bobby Jack changed it up came with the blitz and it worked good call and good defensive play by Kirkpatrick and the push up front from Rodgers and company and the offensive Texas has it back with a touchdown lead Ricky Williams two touchdowns today he dropped the ball he but did. he got back on top of it second time he's fumbled one cost him a field goal well you bet last play again Brad a fourth down play remember Oklahoma's thinking they're not gonna blitz. You're gonna see the linebacker coming in here. You're gonna see Renfro coming in like this. On block from the outside. Both backs run right by the linebacker. That was a miscue by that offensive back. That team time, Michael Rose. Should have had the guy, he didn't pick him up. Second down at 12 for Texas. First minute of the fourth quarter, they lead by seven. Ricky Williams. Back across the original line of scrimmage, and he ended up with about a four or five yard gain as we check in with John Saunders. John? 
Brad, Ohio State is at it again against Penn State. Pepe Pearson from eight yards up for the touchdown, 27-17. But Penn State has just scored on a long run. We'll update you on that in a moment. 27-17 after the Buckeyes. Now it's 27-23. Back to you. All right, a good one going in the Big Ten. Third down and seven here in the Big 12. Oklahoma in a blitz look. Linebacker right there. Two from that side are coming. Here they come. Brown got rid of it. And incomplete. Couple of receivers in the general vicinity. Robert Dulling, I guess, was the intended receiver. He's the closest man. Brandon Daniels that time. Number eight is the guy that put the pressure coming from the edge. Very similar to the look that UCLA looked used against Texas. Three down linemen rushing two linebackers from the same side. That gave Texas problems before. And now Bill Young is reaching in his bag of things he didn't show in the first half, and he's giving it to Texas in the second half. Both coordinators have gone to the blitz as this game gets tighter and the fourth quarter goes on. 15th punt of the game right here. <laughs> Sixth by Texas. Deltas. Oh, it's Ooh, best. is that a beauty. Woo. Wow. And field it at the seven and breaking a tackle. Jackson, and he walks right back into the same man who made the tackle twice. Give Two tackles to Quentin Wallace <laughs> on that punt coverage and a punt that traveled 50 yards. So the defense of Texas comes back out. They got those young guys playing inside that we've been talking all day. The reason one of their leaders is with Dean on the sideline without a helmet on. That's right, Chris Akins. You're out because of a knee injury. This is a club that's been told in Texas right now that has a lot of emotion going for it. Oh, uh, really? It does. You know, we're, um, we have some. So we didn't have things didn't go our way earlier in the season, but um, we're real focused this week. And uh, Oklahoma and uh, Texas is always a big game, and uh, the fellas were ready today. Take a look at these arms, guys. He and I are lifting weights. I'm benching about 150 now. How about you? Uh, 556. 556. All right. <laughs> there you go. You guys go work out together. A flag down. Another <laughs> illegal substitution for Oklahoma. 12 men in the huddle. 11. One by runs off. That's going to cost them half the distance. And now they're going to be back by the three-yard line. Boy, that's got to be maddening. Oh, boy, I guess. You get up around losing 100 yards every game on penalties that drive you crazy. Well, that, you know, that, that's just after a punt, too. You know, you got your first down play and 12 guys running the huddle. Sorry, you can't do that, guys. Right. You can't have the CFL. Yes, you can. And he can go in motion, too. That's so. great. At the three-yard line now. Very dangerous situation for Oklahoma. Tailback set up in the backfield as Parker, and he slipped coming out. Had some help from Aaron Humphrey, who's having a whale of a game. Well, he looks comfortable back at defensive end. Well, to tell you the truth, I'd be comfortable. Nobody even tried to block him this time. You're running the ball right there, and the key man at the point of attack, Oklahoma busts. One of those things Dean talked about, a mental mistake. No one, maybe it was that 12th guy, was supposed to block him on that play. Because that. nobody tried to block the defensive end, and they're running that direction. Remember Sammy Williams, the tackle on that side, was injured in the first half and has come back out there, and he might be playing on a bad wheel. Here comes the fullback this time, and only about a yard gain for Fazand. And who else? Uh oh, Aaron he's, got the, the he's got the pose going. Yeah. He's having a game. Ninth tackle of the day for the sophomore out of Lubbock, Texas. This is a bad spot because if they don't get a little bit of yardage here, I don't care who their punter is, right. he's going to have his back foot near the back door. It's a very demoralized Oklahoma offense right now. A lot of guys waving to the bench. A lot of people mad about that penalty on first down. They're completely out of sync. You can see Eric Moore yelling at one of his linemen. Little and Jackson out to the top of your screen. On third down and long, and Parker runs laterally. Now gets a little bit of a head of steam, spins outside. He almost got out. One more broken tackle, he would have had a first down. And that's seven straight times Oklahoma's failed to convert on third down. So what do you do when you got Demond Parker? Do you play the spin move? <laughs> do you play for the spin That's all the he's body? got. It's all he's got. When you're, if you get the thing, look for the Earl, the Pearl, Monroe spin move on this one. Watch out. This time it's Kirkpatrick. Whoop! <laughs> Inside. Heading towards maybe a 200-yard day, but he'd rather give that up if it was a victory for OU. And right now they're down by seven. 175 yards for Demond Parker. Brian White back waiting on another point. Oh, Texas has got the block on this time. Here it comes. Finally going to bring some heat, it looks like. Um, Jackelford, and he had a line drive. Oh, it nice. Takes a weird bounce, but a fortuitous bounce for uh, Oklahoma. Goes all the way down to the 43-yard line. 
He got 45 more yards yep. out of the kick <laughs> with 11.02 to play in regulation. Nobody in a game like this wants to be the GOAT. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and right now it would be the penalties that uh, too many zebras throwing flags is what we've had today. Absolutely. I'm making this stuff up as we go on. It's 11.02 left in the fourth quarter. It's 17 to 10. Texas leading Oklahoma. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Dean Blevins with you at the Cotton Bowl 92nd meeting between those in the burnt orange and those in the crimson and cream. And right now, Texas with the lead and the ball. They'll start at the 43-yard line. Don't forget, coming up later at the conclusion of our game, we'll select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of our game. Chevy's awarded over $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. James Bryant, play action, throwback screen. Oh. Got his man. Jeffrey Clayton down the sideline. All the way to the 31-yard line. James had to take a shot. He's got to clear the cobwebs and the grass off his face mask, but he got what he wanted. Throwback screen off the counter play that has been so successful to this Texas team. Great call by John Makovic. James Brown is going to know that there's pressure coming on him on this play. This time it's from to the outside, the defensive end. Gets rid of it and had to make a real good throw that time. Terrence Malone just over the outstretched arm that time and then you got a nice convoy going down the sideline a first down call and Matt John was saving that one seventh different receiver James Brown's hit here comes the counter to Ricky Williams into the open field and Williams down to the 16 yard line penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage might negate a 15 yard gain and while we check the flag let's check in with John in New York we told you about this during our last update. Here's a look at it. Aaron Harris breaks a couple of tackles, the spin move, and then it's off to the races. 51 yards on the touchdown, 91 yards on the day for Aaron Harris, and the Nittany Lions are within three. Brad. An illegal procedure penalty here. John is uh, taken back a 15-yard Ricky Williams run. And all the Texas penalties have been on the offense. Only the third one today, but it uh, you know, didn't do him any favors there. That time, Derek Lewis was in motion, and I wonder if he was heading towards the line of scrimmage as that ball was snapped because he was coming from way out in the slot to get back in position for that block to help Ricky Williams. Approaching 10 and a half minutes remaining, fourth quarter. First and 15. Here's Lewis here. He goes this way. Watch Ricky Williams come here for the pass. There goes Lewis. And they throw the slant to Epps. Yep. And it's down to the 25. Same play they used earlier when they threw the ball to Williams. This time, the linebacker got on Williams. Just throw it over his head. Good read. Dale Allen, number 84. He's out here. Watch him jump on Ricky Williams to the outside. That opens up the lane. Boom. Inside, Epps makes a big-time catch there. They've thrown four Courtney's way, and he's caught three of them. That one did not get a first down, but remember that was first and 15, so they picked up about 11 of it, and yep. it's second and four. Now they can call any play they got in the playbook yep. here. I'd give it to 11. Yep. They do. But I guess Oklahoma knew that. <laughs> and it was Corey Callens, the freshman, who made the stop. Corey Callens, another true freshman. And he's out of Jenks, Oklahoma. Was player of the year last year in high school football for the Jenks Trojans. And, uh, my nephew Luke's a member of that team. So is his buddy Bo Davis, who is Steve Davis' son, the great uh, quarterback here in the mid-70s. Those guys have joined us today. All those option quarterbacks we talked about. Yeah. Steve Davis, Jack Mildren, Dean Blevins, Thomas Lott, J.C. Watts. He went on the line. Third down and six. Great drop. Brown comes up throwing and Epps is his man again, and he's got it. It's a first down. Texas inside the OU 20. Yeah, you wonder that time if Rideau didn't push him out of bounds. In college football, you can, it's not like pro where you come down to bounds. If you shove the guy out, it's an incomplete pass. Let's see on the sideline here if he doesn't get the shove. No, his foot does come down. Yeah, left got foot. The left foot down. Yep. Cedric Stevens was the guy who got the shove just a bit, and that's another good play to the outside of that passing formation. Boy, Courtney Epps has been a yep, come man today, up from heaven he? for Texas. Three of his four catches have been on third down. And he's got a first down for him at the 19-yard line. Back in the red zone for the Longhorns, and Brown going deep for White. Got it! Touchdown, Texas! Brown to White. 
colors are burnt orange. You mix brown and white, you get burnt orange. You got it. Mike Woods this time was in the coverage. And this was a perfect throw from James Brown. Struggled early, gets back in the pocket and lets this one go confidently. Actually off his back foot a bit, but he was throwing the ball up and he knew it as he let it go. It was a good throw. Would he come up with a catch? Yes. Phil Dawson in for the point after. Dawson's given Texas a two touchdown lead with just 8.37 left. Oklahoma's got a long way to come back now and only 8.37 to work. A lot of people from Oklahoma are wondering, did Brian White have this ball? Two looks at it, first from behind. You'll see the opening again. Ball's let go real early before Brian White turned around, but Mike Woods gets his hand in there and the ball comes flying loose in the end zone. Woods talk, turns around, but I think he got both feet down. Left, right, and then the ball comes out. I think that's a good call on a touchdown. Boy, it was bang, bang. Yep, when you have that super slow motion. <laughs> I think he had two of them down. Perfect throw, perfect timing that time. That ball was thrown before White even turned around. Speaking of perfect, James Brown, four for four for 64 yards on that drive. Dawson's high kick going to Butler at the 10. Butler weaves his way to the 25, got around Dawson. And a nice return. He was kind of biding his time over yeah. there and then almost broke it. There's what he did on the drive. Well, James Brown was 5 for 15 in the first half, but in this fourth quarter, he has really come around and led this team being a three-year starter this is his fourth year three-time champion for leagues two-time in the southwest conference last year in the big 12 he's not going to go down without kicking well a good return that time by butler has set oklahoma up with what they needed excellent field position at the 48 of texas and here comes parker and he's going to improve that field position in a hurry come on parker inside the 20 forget it he's gone There are no flags. Touchdown, Oklahoma. He had a 65-yarder call back in the first half. This one goes 48 for the score. Brad, I was very surprised when Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, said that Parker was as fast as Brian Hanspark. He, he's right. This he's faster. Guy, he, he's definitely a 4-3 type runner. And he explodes. When there's room, he just explodes into that secondary. He's as good as I've seen. Jeremy Alexander. Trying to make it a seven-point game as it was a few moments ago. Got the hole down, the kick's perfect. Eight Brad. minutes and 12 seconds left. Bo Little got the big block and he didn't hold this time. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? By the new Dodge, it's about change. Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. And by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Well, an electrifying run by DeMon Parker of 48 yards has made this a ball game just that quickly when it looked like Texas had taken control. Now it's 24 to 17. Longhorn still lead, but Oklahoma came back in a hurry. Jeremy Alexander working on a strained knee has not been able to kick deep today, but the adrenaline might be flowing. That's his best kick of the day. Hodges Mitchell way back at the one. Mitchell straight up the middle, and he's cut down on a nice play at about the 21-yard line by J.T. Thatcher. Two big blocks here. Scott Kepnick, big freshman tackle, gets a block, and Mo Little right here comes back and gets a block to the outside to make up, and this time he doesn't hold. Comes back, gets the block. That springs Parker down the sideline. That 4-3 speed just runs away from everybody. Mo Little says, hey, I learned my lesson. I'm going to do it right this time. At the 23-yard line, Devon Parker, 223 yards and two touchdowns. 
and a 65-yarder called back. back. And it's the fullback, Ricky Brown, who goes out for a quick five for Texas. You know, you'd think maybe that's DeMond Parker's best game of the year. It's not. He had 239 yards against Syracuse, and that was only the 10th best rushing day in Oklahoma history. That shows you how many guys have put up 250, 300, whatever. Yeah. Well, they went a number of years when nobody could stop. Nobody knew who had the ball. They That's right. Stop them. This kid right now has 887 yards on the season. There's his numbers today. In about a week, he'll go over 1,000. He'll be the first running back in Oklahoma history since who to go back to back 1,000. Uh, a guy by name Billy Sims. That, that would be him. Yeah, my godfather. <laughs> 747 left. Let's check in with John Saunders, John. Brad, time for the Burger King play of the day. Michigan State and Indiana. Cedric Irvin, an outstanding day. Grabs this punt return and takes this one 80 yards for the touchdown. He had four punt returns for 117 yards, 178 yards rushing, 306 all-purpose yards for Cedric Irvin as Michigan State remains unbeaten and very much in the race in the Big Ten. And Penn State against Ohio State. Right now, it's the lead for the Nittany Lions at 31 to 27. Let's take it back to you, Brad. So Penn State with back-to-back -back touchdowns after being down. And here, Oklahoma was down by 14. They changed it on one play. And now their defense trying to dig in and stop Texas. Second down and four. 7.35 left in the ball game. 24-17 Longhorn. Ricky Williams. Second man across the 30 to the 31. Martin Chase in on the stop. And it's going to bring up a third down and a long yard, maybe two. Boy, he is active, Martin Chase. I and mean, this is a guy that started out as a true freshman playing nose tackle, has been really hampered by moving to defensive end, the defensive tackle. Now he's settled down. He's a big time player at defensive tackle. Three different position changes for him. Yep. And looks pretty comfy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and a yard. Huge play for Texas. Ricky Williams drags people with him. I think he got it. Corey L. Ivey holding on, but I think he got the first down. We understand we're experiencing some technical difficulties with uh, the telecast from here in Dallas, and we will yeah. work on those and uh, try to keep you updated if it means doing a little bit of uh, radio play-by-play. -play. Heaven knows I did about 20 years of that. So. Well, I think it's some of those <laughs> elephant ears from the, uh, the State Fair over here. That's right. There's a livestock problem. Right. 650 with the measurement. Well, let's check in with our livestock on the sideline, Dino. <laughs> Guys, I, I've never been introduced like that. I kind of like that. You know, we thought coming in this might be a game of the survival of the fittest because both teams are banged up as Texas does pick up the first down. It's become that. Oklahoma's lost its second or third team linebacker, Terrence Malone. He's back in now, but they inserted a true freshman, Brandon Moore, who simply is not ready to play. It's electric down on the field. It was not a typical Oklahoma-Texas atmosphere for about three or three and a, a little over three quarters. It is right now. This is, this is the old atmosphere that we've known. And with 6.42 left, you can feel it, Dino, coming to life from the 33-yard line. And a first down for the Longhorn. James Brown, quick drop, throws the out to Brian White. That's the combination of the touchdown last time. Bright broke a tackle down the sideline. How did he tightrope that sideline? And Brian White gets it all the way to the 28 of Oklahoma. I thought he was going to get knocked out of bounds, and that was pretty nifty by Brian White, the junior out of Deer Park, Texas. The ball went to the right man that time. Brian White on a little quick out. Oklahoma was in what they call a quarter-quarter half coverage, meaning there was two guys committed to the weak side of the formation, only one guy out. Good throw, quick out, five-yarder, unless Mike Woods misses a tackle. Boom. Misses a tackle, oh. tight rope down the sideline, doesn't step out, big play on a short pass. I don't know my ballet, but that was kind of one of those demi-plié things. <laughs> he stepped out at the 38. That's where it's first down, Texas. Play action, James Brown back to throw. The post for White goes right back to him. This one's incomplete. Overshot him at the 10-yard line. You don't think there's a lot of intensity and a lot of pressure like we talked about in the open, Brad. John Makovic feels it. The guy behind him feels it. I think that's a prayer move, if you ask me. Oh, man, just get us through this game. With 6.17 left in the fourth quarter. 
James Brown had hit his last five passes before that misfire. His numbers have improved almost incredibly in the second half after a horrendous five for 15 first two quarters. Draw play, Ricky Williams, and he's got Ryan Fisher, a redshirt freshman draped all over him. He only got about two yards. But right now, Texas would be content if they could pick up another first down. They would just keep running and running and running. And they've got maybe the best field goal kicker in all of college football if they could get it down. And Dawson has tremendous range, but they've got to get a little bit closer than they are right now. With the wind, too. Remember, the wind is at Texas's back. It's going that way, maybe about 15 knots. You know, with that in mind, I don't think they do need it to get any closer. They'd like to, but I know Dawson can hit it from here if they don't gain anything on this third down and eight. At the Sooner 37-yard line, Lewis, the tight end in motion. Brown, quick drop, throws wide open Ricky Williams out of the flat, and he got it to the 34-yard line. That's where the forward progress is going to be. He was swarmed under there, and now we're going to see Dawson, I'm sure, come in and try about a 41-yard field goal. We've got an injured player down. Courtney Epps, a wide receiver for Texas, shaken up on that play as they threw a little pass out on the flat to Ricky Williams, and I don't know if Epps got tangled up with the defender back at the 30 or not but he is slow to get up and he's been a big part of this Texas team today as he has four big catches three of them on third down and he limps off so the already depleted wide receiver core for Texas takes another shot but the play at hand right now is the Longhorns at the 34 yard line of the Sooners with Paul a 24-17 lead right ball will be spotted at about the 41 yard line I mean it's a 51 yard kick well he's hit a lot of those his career long is 54 and he has hit 13 straight field goals Phil Dawson from 51 to try to give Texas a 10 point lead kick on the way he got a ton of leg into it and he got it Whoa. oh boy is he a weapon Bill Dawson, another 50-plus yard field goal. With 4.57 left in the ball game, Texas leads by 10. Bill Dawson's just hit his ninth field goal in his Texas career, 50 or more yards. The gap of 44-yard drive and eight plays. Texas has a 10-point lead over Oklahoma. We will try and get you back out to that game. In the meantime, bonus coverage right now, Ohio State and Penn State in the fourth quarter. And if they don't do something here, they may not see it again. And Reggie Germany, that true freshman, is on the field along with D. Nice coverage by Texas special teams. And let's check in with Dean Blevins. You know, guys, on the defensive side of the ball, Oklahoma is really injured. Rodney Bradeau and Cedric Stevens with serious cramping problems. It's unknown whether they will even be able to return. And, of course, you combine that with the injuries and the suspensions, they literally don't have enough guys to go fill the team. You know, Dallas had... Deion Sanders come speak last night at Chapel. He's a close friend of John Blake, and they talk about the ebb and the flow of a game and never lose focus. you got to believe 
I think they need Dion right now. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? They need some help now. They're down 10 and working from their own 20-yard line. Eric Moore. Moore dancing around in the pocket, now looking for a block, and got one from Parker and cuts outside, and he got about nine, and then he got leveled out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Again, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. We are working on it here in Dallas and along the line, and uh, we will remind you that uh, if you're only getting the audio right now, it's 27 to 17, and Oklahoma needs 10 to tie, and they only have four minutes, 39 seconds with which to work. Second down, about a yard to go, just inside their own 30-yard line. Lewis to the left, Gerald Williams to the right. The tight end's in a slot that way. It comes in motion, but the give is to Devon Parker, who's been huge today, but he's dropped at the line of scrimmage by Sean Rogers. Rogers, the freshman defensive tackle, is having quite a ball game at that defensive tackle spot for the Longhorns. And now we have another injured Longhorn, and it's Michael Rose, the fullback I mentioned a moment ago. And he's faced down at the 28-yard line. Texas with a 10-point lead over Oklahoma right now. We will try and get you out there for the finish of the game, but we are having technical difficulties in that game. In the meantime, bonus coverage, Ohio State and Penn State. Here's Brent Musburger. 31-27, Penn State getting the ball back now as Ohio State punts. Bartholomew's kick. He is out of bounds. Oh, that's a pretty good spot all the way back up on the 15-yard line. So the Nittany Lions have the ball. Six minutes and 14 seconds to play in the game. Again, we're going to take you back out to the game between Texas and Oklahoma. Texas with a 10-point lead. As you look on the sideline at one quarterback, Justin Fuente, Eric Moore is leading the Oklahoma attack right now that has a third down and a yard. With 4.23 left in the fourth quarter, the score is 27-17. to Texas in front, and Oklahoma really struggling on their third down conversions. They've missed their last seven. Well, they'll get two shots at it here. Yes, they will. <laughs> this is two down territory, whether you're at your own 29 or not. A little bit of option. And Moore goes down short of the first down. Sean Rogers, I, get, I think, is again the guy that blew in there from his defensive tackle spot. He forced Moore up inside, and he was stopped short of the first. Two freshman defensive tackles for Texas. True freshman played high school ball a year ago. That guy is 6'4", 300 pounds, made the play on that one. Oklahoma's using two freshman defensive ends. They ever got together, they'd have a heck of a line, <laughs> wouldn't they, for about four years? Yep. Here's fourth down. This is the ball game for Oklahoma. Moore straight ahead. He got it. Quarterback sneak got about two. Behind Bruce McClure, his center, and the rest of the group up front, he picks up the first down. And now time is of the essence. 328 remaining. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts. But Oklahoma needs a big play here. They got to get it somehow in DeMond Parker's right. hands and let him do some open field magic. That's the problem. The big plays from this offense come from the back, number 33, not from the receivers and the quarterback. Parker. Only got about two. They spread everybody out with a four wide out look, but Nava wasn't biting, and he makes a stop on Parker. Nava's had a heck of a game at outside linebacker. Aaron Humphreys had a huge game at defensive end for Texas. The wide receiver, as Oklahoma takes a timeout, the wide receivers for Oklahoma have caught only one ball in this game. Just under three minutes left in a second and seven coming up for Oklahoma when we come back. Yep, we're going to keep it right here. And well, with I'd, that, both I'd teams will head to their sideline. I'd always rather stay than do a commercial in this spot. Yep. We can... Give you another uh, reminder. If you missed it, the Las Vegas IRL coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern tomorrow as the Indy race 
league season will come to a close. We'll find out who the champion will be. 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central tomorrow on Sunday on ABC Sports. Now you can see Oklahoma down at two timeouts now. And they still got a long ways to go. They need two scores to tie this game up. And I think they're going to have to forsake the running game now. They just can't afford not to get first downs on plays or have incomplete passes at this point. They need to throw the ball down the field. Jarrell Jackson is probably the most dangerous guy as a receiver. He trots up to the top of the screen. He has not caught a ball today. Mo Little comes out to the right. And a straight drop by Moore. And he tried to throw a slant, and it's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Chris Smith, the defensive end that time. I've got a hand up. And now it's third and long again. Third down and seven. Remember that front four for Texas still without a sack on the season. But in this situation, I think they're only going to rush four guys. The only sack today was when they came on that blitz. Right. And it was Kirkpatrick and Rodgers who brought down the quarterback on the option. Now let's see if Parker can get ahead of steam in the open field. Made a couple miss. Here he goes. Come on, Parker down the sideline. He's going to take it. Touchdown, Oklahoma. 68 yards. Boy, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I guess if all you got is 33, you use 33. This isn't the first time this has worked today. Todd Barnes comes back and gets a block. Watch the freeze right here. The freeze move. Ba -ba -ba. Boom, inside. Really almost a clip from behind that time that could have been called. But once Parker breaks in the free, there's no one going to catch him on this Texas secondary. Unbelievable. 291 yards and three touchdowns for DeMond Parker. I think he just moved up that single game rushing chart right. we were talking about earlier. Extra point by Jeremy Alexander is good. What a performance by DeMond Parker. 291 and three, and that last touchdown, 68 yards, has cut the Longhorn lead down to three with 242 to play. I don't think you'll see too many games this year where two tailbacks will put on shining performances like these two. Ricky Williams of Texas on the right, but DeMond Parker, 291 yards on the left, including a 68-yarder a moment ago, one of three scoring runs for him today. He had one call back, or he had had one of them all, one of those all-time games, if you throw that one in there. There's the numbers on those two. Nothing needs to be said except wow. on the fake play to take one more look at something that wasn't called on the touchdown. And look at that coming up after the kick of Jeremy Alexander. And Brian White and Hodges Mitchell are there. And the kick coming. And it's going to be Hodges Mitchell at the two-yard line. Mitchell 
Back across the 15 and out near the 20. 27 to 24, Texas leads, but they're clinging to that lead with 232 left thanks to a 68-yard touchdown by DeMond Parker. But, Gary, you noticed something along the way on that touchdown. Yeah, Todd Barnes, number 83, his first play of the game, clips Babineau on this play. Watch this, 83 into 38, mirror image. That's a clip right there. That should have been called. And that really would have been even more heartbreak for Oklahoma. But now the Texas people are saying, how could you miss that one? Yep. Well, three-point game with Texas having the ball at the 19-yard line. And now can you feel it? What Dean was talking about at the beginning of the game, what lacked when it got sloppy, and now that it's getting exciting, 76,000 are screaming. And it's Ricky Williams who goes for about six more. It's possible we'll have both of these running backs with over 200 if things keep going this way. That's a pretty good job by that offensive line for Texas that time. I'm pretty surprised that Oklahoma took a timeout so soon here after first down. They only have two. That means they got one left, and that means that Texas, should they not get the first down, are going to bleed the whole time off. James Brown has a chance to talk it over with Coach Makovic. And it gives us a chance to remind you, coming up tomorrow night on ABC, the wonderful world of Disney presents the world premiere of Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Rick Moranis, the star of that, plus a behind-the-scenes look at the making of Cinderella. Then 90210's Brian Austin Green stars in the world premiere of Unwed Father. It's all tomorrow night on ABC. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dean Blevins at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, a 90-second meeting between Oklahoma and Texas, and it may not have been a whirlwind of a game because neither team, for the first time on record, didn't have a winning record coming into this game. That's never happened before, right. but I don't think anybody cares right now that's watching. All they know is Texas has a three-point lead, and they've got a second and four from their own 25-yard line. Straight ahead give to Ricky Williams. He is very close to the first down. Yeah, that think, was a big time run. I think he got it. That's a big time blocking up front because you're running into the teeth of that defense that does a good job stopping the run. Two straight, two plays straight ahead runs and Ricky Williams picks up a first down. That's why I thought that timeout use there was a big gamble. They gained so much on first down. I permitting thrifty car rental post game report with John Atan, all the scores and highlights from around the country. If you're if you're James Brown, you have to play the clock now, the 25 second clock. You have to snap it with one or two. Texas might in fact even take a timeout with one second to go and and work on some strategy. That's good strategy, I think. Timeout taken by Texas. Right now, John Makovic and Gene Dahlquist, the offensive coordinator, are doing the math and figuring out what they have to do to get out of the half, get out of this game alive. Well, here comes a conversation between John Makovic and James Brown. I think Dean was privy to the last one. Dino? Well, I was. There's miscommunication here between John and James right now. I did hear the last play that uh, when James came over, the coach says, all right, good job, no screw up. So that's the number <laughs> one thing they're trying to avoid. But there is some it, miscommunication here and what they should have done. It seemed to me, Gary, as you called it, that they did a nice job of running the clock down. Yeah. I don't think John wanted to waste the timeout. Well, I don't think it's a wasted timeout, Dean, because right now you just run, use the, it, the time is more important than timeouts, right. and you run the right play. I think James Brown did the right thing that time. I just don't know why John would have been upset. I mean, surely he, the only other thing is they could have run the play. Yeah, but if it didn't work, There'd be a lot of upset people. <laughs> Here, I'm, I'm right about four feet from him. I'll just go home already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Hey, he doesn't hear me. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get him. It's a three-point game with less than two minutes to go, and it's the 92nd meeting, and 48 of them have been decided by 10 or less. And that includes overtime last year, a tie game two years ago. First down. And they whistle this one dead. Now, John Blake should, this play was whistled dead before the snap, so they should put time back on the clock. And every second's precious. Especially when you're only down by three. John Blake should tell him to put time back on the clock. John Blake is doing just is. that. At least a couple of seconds. Absolutely, and everything counts now. That was a dead ball foul, so time should go back on the clock. It's a correctable error. 
Please, please reset That's the what, clock. That's what Neil Dobbins telling us right now. <laughs> what's not correctable is his mic. That's right. That's Apparently out. not. There goes three extra seconds. Right. Well, we've done some games where three seconds means a lot. You're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hang with it. The problem is only one timeout left for Oklahoma. It really doesn't matter how many timeouts Texas has. Texas has overcome five fumbles. They lost two of them, both by Ricky Williams, remember. And they don't want that to happen here either. That would be disaster. First and 15 at the 25. James has to tell him, hold on to the ball. And here oh, he comes. Man. And a penalty marker down. I thought he was going to break into the clear, but holding on is Brandon Daniels. Looks like we're going to have a holding call, though, against Texas. And now they keep going the wrong way and stopping the clock and backing up. And that's playing right into Oklahoma's hands. If Oklahoma had two timeouts, Texas would be in deep trouble right now. As it is, if they don't get a first down, they probably won't. There'll only be six, eight seconds left in the game, I think. Terrence Malone is down for the second or third time in this game. He keeps coming back. He cramps again. You'll see the holding right in here. There's the grab of the jersey. Corey Kalins is the guy that gets the jersey grab and the call. Yeah, I thought Ricky Williams was going to go. That's not, not holding. When you grab the jersey of the ball carrier, Brandon Daniels makes a nice play. But again, Texas keeps backing it up. Now you wonder, and boy, this gets to be where the strategy really gets crazy. Now do you try to pass at all? Well, I don't think you pass. <laughs> no, you can't pass, but you wonder if you take a safety and use a free kick. You know, that's a, that's a tough strategy. That leaves in that you a one-point lead. You're, it you're it right. does, but if you get a punt blocked, ask West Virginia and Don Nalen about yep. that. So they're going to help Malone off. All the Texas penalties have come against the offense. John Blake trying to figure out a way for his team to get the football back. They have one timeout left. Well, I'm surprised this ball isn't marched back. What was the penalty? They declined it. Decline the penalty. So it that's stays a, second down. That's a, that's a huge mistake. That's going to cost them 30 seconds on the clock. There's the clock. Ticking away. Make no mistake, guys, that John Makovic is calling his own plays here. No, his neck's on the line. But he's the one calling them. Almost jumped offside. Oklahoma, now they do touch the right guard, but who moved? Now another flag down. Twenty-five second clock. Legal procedure, Texas. It is against the Longhorns. So there's going to be a chunk of lost time on Oklahoma's side that they're going to be wondering about for years to come, maybe. Meanwhile, it is now second down and 13. And the clock is going to run another 25 seconds. Right. Wow. A free 50 seconds right. approximately off the clock for Texas, if they use all of it before the snap here anyway. Brian White going in motion. They're using a pretty good chunk of it. Here's oh, the inside yeah. handoff. Ricky Williams. Had Brandon Daniels not held on, he would have been gone again. Now they got to take the time out here. 12 more yards for Ricky Williams. And when I said earlier, we might have two tailbacks with each over 200 yards. I wasn't kidding. He's getting close. Well, let's look at it. 57 seconds to go. Texas is going to run the play. Of course, if they make the first down, it's over. But if it doesn't, it depends on when the referee spots the ball. Surely Texas will take a penalty, a delay, or call a timeout and use up the whole 25 seconds. So if they have to punt, there's going to be about 12 seconds left in the game. Now, do you punt it or do you take a safety? That's what John McEvick must be thinking about right now. Guys, we'd love to have a first down. We just don't need a fumble. And we have to decide whether we're going to punt or not after this play. Well, and if they do indeed try to go for a safety, I'll tell you what I would do. I wouldn't put my punter back there. I'd put my running back or my quarterback back there, somebody that has great hands, and let them run. Because if a punter drops a well, ball heading back to the end zone yeah. right now, oh, it's yeah. disaster. Well, what you could do, and you see how tight these games have been for Oklahoma, this would be three out of four to it go down the way it is right now. Losses by four points or less. But they could do the play that Bill Parcells used where you just throw it out of the back of the end zone. 
Well, a lot of scenarios, but it's all going to be determined here in a couple of seconds. Well, Third gonna, down and a yard. They're going to run a quarterback sneak. This is very short. Oh. Ricky Williams on the handoff, and there he goes again. Williams goes for about 17 on third and one, and that'll ice it for Texas, and it'll put Ricky Williams over 220 on his day. Boy, what a great performance by these two running backs today. Well, let's go back where we started in this game. Remember the rumors. Remember the pressure on Texas. John Makovic was coaching for his job, or so said the press, and Texas's everyone involved in the Texas program was very quiet about it, so you have to assume that that's what he was doing, was coaching for his job, and at least for another week, he's got it. <laughs> a knee, the greatest play in football if you're a Texas fan. John Blake obviously looks on disgruntled. It has been a thriller of a second half. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, and uh, there was no doubt. Damon Parker almost 300 yards for Oklahoma. Ricky Williams 223 for Texas. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. This one has gone on for 92 years, and the 92nd meeting has gone to the Texas Longhorns.